Parental discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show 310 right here in Pittsburgh, PA, coming from Mayhem Studios. Chachi's on assignment, and I am here with the uh, cast and crew of the Mayhem Show that's usually here. Uh, Missy's on the couch. Hi. Yeah, she'll be hanging out. She'll be hanging out. Uh, I'm doing interny things. And uh, in a little bit, we'll be talking with Jimmy DeMarco and Chess Flexor, who have a muscle... Uh, a muscle worshiping ceremony, which we're going to find out what that is, uh, and and they have some words for uh, for IWC's fans, IWC's promoters, IWC's former promoters, and we'll find out what's up with that. Also, we're going to be having interviews with uh, Death from Above, the new Kurt Angle flick that's going to be coming out this summer, uh, featuring several TNA stars. We'll be talking with the producers of that film in the first of our series of interviews you'll be seeing in the next few weeks leading up to our couple minutes with Kurt Angle, of all people. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, well, first, uh, uh, let's go around the horn here. DJ Lunchbox joins us. How you doing, sir? Hey, what's up, hot dog? I am, in fact, DJ Lunchbox, and I did interview Kurt Angle, which if you're a fan of the show, you know how weird that was for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you handled yourself well, sir. Uh, also, from you. San Antonio, Texas, the yes. Wrestle Fan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's the Wrestle Fan here. Once again, on Wrestling Mayhem Show 30 something. It's some big number, but it's awesome. 310 30 something. And from Johnstown, PA, the land of no more wrestling feds, yeah. uh, Bobby FJ Town. I was going to say sad news out of Johnstown unconfirmed reports of the death of AON. Mm, so sad, sad so sad. And also from uh, more southernmost of Pittsburgh is Wheels. The What's sound up, guy for RWA. Yeah, I survived another weekend, and I'm here to entertain you. Wait, that was like two weeks ago. I know, but the weekend, there was another weekend in between that. Uh, oh, hey, oh. Any, I live in a college town. You never know what can happen. That's right. You're down in California, aren't you? Have yeah. you been to California, college prom? PA. PA. Wheels, Wheels, have you been to college prom? <laughs> mm hmm. Mm. Wills lived college prom. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, guys, you can check us out if you this is your first time coming and, and you want to uh, uh, find out more about us. Hey, there's a little bit of a redesign going over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Where you Look find at all that. Information about us. Look at this stuff. They're, they're where's wrestle the wrestle banner. What's that? Where's the new banner? I mean, where's the where's, new banner? Yeah. Oh, the new banner. new banner. I'll get to that. You can also follow us on Facebook. We got a group on Facebook as well. Uh, so where a lot of conversations been happening lately. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, we're also on uh, the Google Plus where we do hangouts all the time where we may be watching NASCAR. Yes, <laughs> yes. Things explode. It gets a little more interesting than The Rock yeah. talking for 10 minutes. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. Uh, but we might Pablo talk about Montoya is blowing up. I'm watching it. Yes, that kind of <laughs> wins. Uh, also, hey, you can check us out. We're on iTunes. We're on a ro- your ro- Rovio, Rovio, Roku, Roku box. Wow, no, that's Angry Birds. Wow, sorry. Um, you can check us out on Switch, Stitcher, Stitcher, uh, and you can also check out the app like Mister Wheels has right there. <laughs> it's flying. <laughs> I, I don't it's think our app flies. Super app. <laughs> you have it on Android. You got it on the iPad. You got it on the iPhone. It's a dollar ninety nine. Gets you uh, ex- exclusive content we don't show anywhere else uh, in the gold and, uh, and and easy access to the shows. Any way to contact us? The hotline. Hey, uh, speaking of the hotline, you can call us at four one two two zero six WMS zero nine six seven zero, or you can send an email to good times at wrestling mayhem show.com so let's get right into it with the uh interactions with the fans uh first of all uh, i don't know when we're going to close this contest but we had of course last week uh we started our caption contest guys <laughs> Everybody's laughing. Can, can employees slash interns uh, yes, I don't think you're, you you can qualify for the uh, the Triple H, and it, it should be right there if you want to hold it up there. Uh, we, did, we did we did have some good entries from people up the, around the show. We did, we did, but it, it, it should be in one of the cubbies there, the Triple H little mini thing with the Undertaker. Uh, but again, there's here's the picture on for everybody on video. You can go; it, it's one of the featured articles. There's WrestleFan down there in the corner. <laughs> 
And it was apparently the first time Missy's seen this. Missy has not seen this photo. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, but blow we did, it up and make a poster. But like I said, like I said, we, we have some <laughs> over there at uh, Texas Anarchy, Anarchy Wrestling. Um, but, but yeah, we did have a little bit of a, a Sonic uh, emailed us a couple of times this week. It said Extreme Leak Frog is a fan favorite. And also, WrestleFan tries out the prototype of YouTube 3D um, <laughs> over on uh, our... There, there were some also on the Facebook page yes. that were enjoyable. My favorite from uh, Riz, who's not on the show this week, whoa, a black guy. WrestleFan's like seeing them black thing. folks down in uh, Texas. What? I'm not going Mexicans right. and white folk. That's not right at all. Uh, uh, let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, well, Riz was. Think, are you saying politically incorrect or inaccurate? Uh, I think both. Both. Uh, let's see. <laughs> White men can be jumped. Uh, yellow shirted man. Oh wait, that's from you. You can't. You can't yeah, comment on me. your own. You call me a yellow shirted boy. Oh boy. And most of us is uh, Chris Brown prepares for his match with CM Punk. Oh. Um, cool move. Yeah. Now watch me fart in this fetus's face. Uh, from my sister. They just had to throw in the fetus. Part. And that's from Alexander K. And, and the Riz, of course. Uh, and from my sister, I'm going to poop on you. <laughs> uh, from Zach Rain, did he get his period? Um, yes. What? Yes. And, and then, that, doesn't even, that doesn't even make a little bit of sense. Oh, yes, it does. I Maybe it's the way I'm, I'm presenting it. I don't know. So go check that out. Join over WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Comment there. Comment on the Facebook and uh, you could win a Triple H versus Undertaker mini buddy uh, set that we have playing around here. We'll send it to you. Uh, send it to email, too. That, that works, too. Um, what else we got here, guys? We got... Uh, I do have a couple tweets I wanted to share. Um, tweets. One, uh, Berg's, you know, we had these stickers. I have to get some more here. Uh, we had these stickers going around. And randomly, we saw this tweet that uh, both Chachi and I were, um, were uh, uh, retweeted on. Uh, Berg's Eye wife of the uh, uh, wife of the fantastic Berg's Eye View uh, show runner Hutch uh, sent this out uh, random pictures says I was in my living room came down to the bar and found this and there's a bunch of them there I don't remember giving them stickers it's the weird thing so um, you, 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 I, I'm assuming Sorg just gets really drunk grabs a big roll of stickers and just puts <laughs> them like, in the you need Stand some stickers out. and you need some stickers uh, Sorg is the Oprah of stickers Kev <laughs> <laughs> Kev YG everyone gets some of your best stickers <laughs> Kev YG uh, sent us this Instagram best shirt ever and it's uh, two pandas it says WWF <laughs> one awesome. panda is taking a steel chair to the other Yes. Where can I buy that? Because I will tomorrow. Um, no headshots. No, no headshots. headshots. No headshots. <laughs> no. Um, what else we got here? Uh, all I know is, uh, oh, Shireman, uh, at Shireman, Jim Shireman, Coach Shireman on Twitter. He's he's got the he's picked up the new WrestleFest game, it seems. And, uh, and we've been going back and forth with comments about it. And uh, he says, all I know is in the arcade, earthquake vertical splash equals get more quarters out. Because uh, apparently your finishing moves don't finish you off anymore, like they used to in the old arcade game. And also, uh, there's a close-up on the no- of the notes on the Rock's wrist floating around YouTube or Twitter. Yeah. And this is what I, I, one of you guys in the in the hangout last night actually brought this up. I think maybe Riz. Uh, but yeah, there there is the notes that were referred to last night on the Rock's wrist for his promo. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's amazing. I, th- I think all of them just say Cena equals gay. <laughs> yes, pretty pebbles, that's basically pretty all pebbles. He... Uh, establish new cash fry cash phrase. Say that something's trending a couple of times, even though it isn't. Um, yeah, it's yeah. a shameful thing. Lobster head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sonic in the chat room. I, I, this isn't officially in unless you email because I'll lose the chat room. Our wrestling is so intense it'll cause puberty. From Whoa. the caption. Uh, How's it going? What's that? Go back to the notes. I, go back to the notes. Where's that at? Yes, Charlie Brown, wrestle fan can be real. <laughs> wow. And we go to the fan mail. Fan mail. LB, fan mail. I see you've tagged yes. one in here. You want to rock that? Um, no, I didn't, Sorg. What? <laughs> That's left. That must be left over from last week. Okay, I'll read it then. Oh, I'm, I got. I got okay. it up. I'm okay. happy to read it, but. <laughs> WMS! 
I know how WWE can spin this whole disaster at the Daytona 500. Oh, Since no. Juan Pablo Montoya was unscathed after the huge explosion he caused with the jet engine during a caution at the same event John Cena was at, when the WWE cuts the multiple replays of it, yeah, that's right. There should be one guy in the crowd with a laser pointer. The one guy with the laser pointer shines the light in the face of Montoya, and that's what causes JPM to crash. After weeks of video analysis, they zoom in on a laughing guy who gets ready. Who, who, who turns out to be? Get ready. Kane. Oh, yeah. And The Rock will come out and call Cena a Fruity Pebble, and everyone will chant Fruity Pebble, and then no one will care that John Cena has a better promo than The Rock. <laughs> until, th- until next time, get ready for a Raw filled with tag team matches, playa. Riz. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, oh awesome. That's about right. Yeah. I'm going to make it tag a tag team, team match. match. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and we got another one here from Pierre K. He is... Oh. Oh. <laughs> From about five days ago here. Uh, he, he's, he's got a little bit about Brodus Clay. Uh, when Brodus Clay returned, everyone thought he was going to use the same monster look uh, from he, he did on Superstars of Wrestling a year ago. Uh, nowadays, he becomes the new millennium's answer, Flash Funk, except he packed on a few pounds. On average, Brodus would use three moves, followed by a WTF finisher and a pinfall. Uh, but when WWE thought he was... That was uh, the last of him for a while in gimmick land. Fantasio. He actually used the word Fantasio. Uh, he actually made up the word Fantasio. Uh, <laughs> the goon and I. No, Isaac... not a made up word. Not a made up word. That's an actual wrestler yeah, from the WWF wrestler, yeah. days. Oh, that was a gimmick, gimmick. Yeah. The goon and Isaac Yanka must have had a Hall of Fame gimmick wing, wing but Brodus would have have to be one in five years for <clears throat> be in one from. In five years from now, uh, Mr. McMahon was told that he was unsafe for TV despite that Heath Slater incident that didn't make it to SmackDown. I, does anybody know about this? They cut their match, I know. They, yeah, they cut the match between Brothers and Heath There's, for some reason. I don't know. Okay. Oh, uh, well, like a SmackDown. One week in February. Oh, the exclamation was for SmackDown because apparently that's part of the copyright. Um, <laughs> the trademark there. Uh, not the end of the set. Down. <laughs> Make it to SmackDown one week in February. But as soon as he gets his in ring work together, he'll promise he'll promise he'll soon return to the company. Before you know it, let's hope a return to his old self again. See you guys later. You know, I I didn't think Brodus was that bad in the ring. No, no he wasn't. He wasn't. I don't. I, right. I, no, no. I you know the word is he, there's just everything going on with uh, they they just. Moving that aside, because they're gearing up for WrestleMania, and there's not really any place for like any undercarders, except for NXT mm. at this point. That's probably yeah. Heath Slater's fault. Or is or is Heath Slater's fault? Everything is Heath Slater's fault. Yeah, blame Heath Slater. So uh, let's. That's all for Fucking the fan mail and such right now. Let's toss it to WrestleFan. He's got a little bit of info going on for the Indie Minutes. Indie Minutes. Well, we do have our folks from IWC that are going to be on uh, to talk about IWC. they got got coming up combat in Clearfield. Uh, so uh, we'll definitely uh, give that information out during that interview. Um, but uh, this Saturday in uh, San Antonio, Texas, I will be going to the next event for River City Wrestling, which is RCW Super Show. Um, it's definitely going to be a uh, really awesome event. The main event that has been announced is going to be a uh, friend of the show, Ray Rowe. He will be teaming with the large adore, Michael Faith, to be taking on the Headhunters. Yes, those Headhunters. Um, they will be yes. making their return to River City Wrestling in a tag team matchup. If I, also- can, if I can interject, WrestleFan, do not remind them of Strangle Mania and the, Rus- and the Mushroom Boys on Facebook. They get angry at you. Yeah, they do. I found out firsthand. <laughs> why Why is there lo- looks like a playboy bunny here oh that's uh that's um that's uh, it's in, i can't i can't explain that no uh, <laughs> and i give up <laughs> yeah, i give up um and then also for the uh, rcw championship brooklyn's finest aj summers makes his first defense against steve mcenroe in what the match has now been made a fan lumberjack strap match so uh basically what will happen is there will be a raffle during the show Eight fans from the crowd will be chosen to be lumberjacks that will surround the ring with leather straps. So that is definitely going to be a match you want to see, a match you want to get involved with. Um, You're going to poop yourself. 
<laughs> At least it's not with the headhunters. I'm not whipping the headhunters. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, is, would it be really a good idea to give fans straps? Hey, I, uh, Sorg brought up a good point when I mentioned it to him. At least, at least we don't have an athletic commission. <laughs> Do you seriously True. not have any athletic commission whatsoever? I, I think we have one, but they just don't give a shit. <laughs> it's Texas, whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, that's that's why they call them Texas Death Matches. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. So that's fucking, true. They'll fucking is that, mean, that there. Is that is that how they get away with it with the PA athletic commission? Because uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, they had, the Necro Butcher was that uh, not an RCW show? It was at some other wrestling event. Yeah, light tubes and all that crazy stuff. So I'm real. I think they're there. I think they just don't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. I think they're just sitting there, like, eating, you know, bag a bag of Skittles and just being like, yeah, you I'm do whatever. Sure. I'm pretty sure Ohio is the same way. Because Ohio is the, the place where you see all the light two matches and all the crazy yeah. shit. That I, like, I, I'm looking at some of the stuff on the DVDs for AIW uh, from when Jimmy was there. And yeah. I can't imagine them doing Because, like, you, you talk about WrestleFan, like, a lot of the bar matches and everything. I mean, like, it, it, it's so, so... I, I just really don't think the athletic commission will allow that at all here. In, yeah, here, here in the I swear. here in the Commonwealth, all right, we like, yeah, our, a lot, there are a we lot like of the sensible Texas wrestling in our Commonwealth. Thank you very much in Pennsylvania. A, a, a lot, a lot of the Texas promotions, I think, would be. Fun. I mean, they don't really go a lot of the light tube route and stuff like that. No, no. There, there's one, there's one, a couple, you know, here and there. But yeah, if Texas really did crack down, we'd be fucked. Um, <laughs> Yeah, basically. I, I I would love to see it. Is there, is there anybody that's like an expert on these different commissions and the weird weird shit that goes on there between them? Because, I mean, you know, of course, like WWE has to deal with this from state to state. Uh, I know there were certain states that they couldn't go for a while. Actually, when they had the barbed wire, barbed wire cage match here uh, for that No Way Out against like the Big Show and JBL in Pittsburgh. Show, yeah. I mean, yeah. that was a big deal because they were like, OK, there's going to be a razor wire on the top of their cage. It's like, yeah, but. That's not allowed in PA. Yeah, like barbed wire. Barbed wire is not allowed in PA anymore. What did, what did I? Um, it was either a Chikar or a CZW show, but there was a representative from the PA Athletic Commission that would always go to those shows at the ECW Arena, mm -hmm. and he'd get booed the hell out of. <laughs> really? Like, Weird. yeah, I I, I, for, I can I couldn't remember his name for the life of me, but I've seen like videos and stuff like that of them of wrestlers and just like uh, people just like ripping on him. Yeah, I mean, there's always also that thing like you're not allowed to blade. I'm pretty sure in in this state, like I always hear about it, but but it happens. Like it, it definitely happens at these indie shows. Well, yeah. So uh, I, I I don't know. I, I would love I would love to hear a little bit more about the the you know what's going on between that. I mean, there's a whole other layer of, of shit happening on top of that 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 we don't even know about. Um, I'd be curious. Um, but anyways, yeah. Um, so definitely, that's go check that out. That's this Saturday. Uh, at the uh, uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, I will be there. If you come, uh, go say hi. You know, all that good stuff. Um, <gasps> Russell fan needs a fan, uh, friend. <laughs> a friend. <laughs> hey, I got recognized for my uh, Alyssa Flash interview at a show ago. So hey, nice, nice, nice. I'm, I'm sort of famous. Um, also, um, like I mentioned last week, also our friends at Anarchy Championship Wrestling. Keep an eye out for them. They got good stuff coming up. In a in a couple of weeks, we will have a representative from Anarchy Championship Wrestling on the show for an interview. So look forward to that. And that is the uh, indie minute for this week. There you go. Whoa, oh, 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 Bobby wants to. Oh, have oh, the floor. yeah, and, and Bobby has news. What's going um, on, Bobby? With a heavy heart, uh, from Mike Edwards, the AON's one of the AON's announcers uh, Facebook page, uh, and I quote. Just did one of the hardest things I ever had to do, film the final AON rundown. We had a panel of AON wrestlers join me and my two co-hosts to talk all things AON. It was fun, and I have to say thank you to all those who joined us. To everyone else, thank you for the memories. I regret nothing over the past two years and loved every moment. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting us. Just thank you. One last time for X-Man and Drew Shannon. Amen for AON. There you go. But... Someone, but someone needs Zach to Rain about. on his Twitter or Facebook page said that wrestling is not over in Johnstown. More to come. Can so someone we'll please see how where it goes from there? Can someone with the best singing ability here sing "Leave the Memories Alone"? <laughs> <laughs> memories alone. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> 
Manchild had a new T-shirt design, a new new logo design for oh. his heel turn, which was one week. <laughs> so. Oh. He's a Dude, one, that's, one week he turned heel. Manchild. That's what happened. They turned mankind tail. turned heel, or mankind man, manchild. <laughs> manchild turned heel, and the whole company went to shit. It, yep, all the all the little kids protested. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nobody, everybody stopped buying merch and was over. No, uh, <laughs> you do not piss off the children. That's this what happened. That's what happened in WWE when John Cena turns heel. Exactly, exactly. He turns that frown or that smile upside down, and it's all over. John Cena all right, his face off, and I have another angry face underneath. <laughs> and with that, uh, let's take it to the couch. With us right now, the IWC Heavyweight Champion, Jimmy DeMarco. Hello. And Chess Flexor on the show in the studio right now. How you guys doing this week? Thanks for having us, Sword. <laughs> to answer your question, we're doing pretty well. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so it's been, a, it's been a good bit. Flexor, I think it's been a while since you've been on the show. Yeah, you know... Some people don't return my calls, return my messages, return my instant messages, return my zippity doo dah messages. Well, 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 to answer your one earlier, no, I won't sell you all the DVDs at seven dollars, so you can do your own table. No, at clear five dollars, no, five dollars, and I sell them for seven. Okay, okay. Don't you fans want that IWC DVDs seven dollars from Chess Flexor? I want the best Flexor, of Chess or, uh, Flexor. You're but, supposed to give me all your money too. What about what I asked? I held you up. Per email, I asked you something in the email too, and you didn't reply to me. I'm not. That's not. I. We don't talk about that side of the company, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> here at Sorgatron Media, um, inside here. <laughs> what happens in the Sorgatron Media hot tub stays. Sorgatron Media hot tub. <laughs> I wish I hear other voices, but I don't see emails. <laughs> that's. <laughs> That's LB up there. Uh, he's, hey. on, he's, on, he's on your monitor in front of you. Oh, there he is. I know him. There you go. There you hey, go. what's up? So, uh, up. of course, uh, uh, IWC, your IWC heavyweight champion. Once again, once again, the mayhem bump. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, what are you doing? I got excited when you said I was champion. I started having, like, convulsions. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if I if Flexor wasn't holding me down, it would look like I was breakdancing right now all over your floor. You'd have to go mobile. Crumping. Yeah, crumping. Crumping and bumping. Then he'll be shuffling. Crushing Second and Second place, only the wheel. Hot wheels. Yeah. I <laughs> used to carry a cardboard box everywhere so I could just smash it down and then just start rolling <laughs> splits and stuff and breakdancing. Awesome. I could go beast wow. at any moment. Any moment. I know you wanted to tell me a secret, but save that for later. Yeah, we got a lot of time. <laughs> All the time in the world. <laughs> wow. Uh, all right, let's get right into the questions here. We got, we got some stuff from Mad Mike up in the Bronx. Always good for the questions. From the Bronx, yo! How do they say it? Like, what's their... Uh, that was a bad fucking Bronx accent. He was like, where's my pizza, dog? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Tony got his tiles jacked. <laughs> what, 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 what? Do Sounds the question in the British accent. I, yeah. I can't, I can't do it. No, accent. man, my British is like, ah. You have to do it. I don't the think I can do it. was born. I don't know, how do I start with a Bronx accent? He doesn't even have a Bronx accent. He's it doesn't matter. Kids. You have to do the He's question tough. in a Bronx accent. Yeah. You can't when, answer it. When do you use guys' favorite match? If I say use a lot. What's the use guys doing? Yeah, that's a pizza. <laughs> it's a pizza pie. The day a gimmick was born. Well, the first questions are for the billion dollar man, Mr. Flexor. That's you. That's, I got a you go. Oh, he's, he's referencing a shirt right there. Bill on. Bill on. Dollar. It's man. Bill. Wait, wait. Hey, wait yeah, the zero, is there something wrong with the zeros on that? Yeah, thing? they're this, not. There's they're not a whole, the whole bunch of <laughs> wrong with that. This is a special edition one. There's only six of those in existence. There's one only, fan but has there's one. only two zeros two. after the comma. I'm the biggest For those that are on audio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the question? Uh, okay, first question here is uh, Are you ever going to give Ray Rowe that the ass kicking you owe him from a couple years ago when he cheated you out of the IWC championship? That's a good question. But we're not here to talk about me. <laughs> we're here to talk about the world champion. No, we're here to talk about Chess Flexor. Us? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Okay, I'll answer that. I'll answer time. that. You have your time. Ray Rowe, I want you to get on a plane, a train, get in an automobile, 
<laughs> get up here to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Or Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pennsylvania. And you get in that ring. And I want you to look across it because I'm going to be standing in front of you at the opposite corner waiting for my rematch. I know you screwed me. I know Norm screwed me by putting me in that match. And I want one more chance. One more chance of victory. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Are you watching this right now? Yeah, get him. Yeah. He's going to get it. That's, fun. That's yeah. funny enough because I'm actually going to see Ray Ray on Sunday or oh, on shit. Saturday. Don't tell him that. Don't tell him I said that. No. <laughs> <watching this. laughs> We're going to fly down and tell him. We're going to fly down. tell him in person. Yeah. Oh, guys. Guys, next question. question. Next question. Yeah, sure. Next question from <laughs> Mike. <laughs> now, Matt Mike says, as a chemical engineer, uh, I, he's been trying to reverse engineer the pump juice for years now from, uh, you know, back in the day, pump, pump Ferrari, the pump juice, uh, which I think was left here. I, I don't know. Uh, is, is there some secret ingredient that I'm missing? I have mm-hmm. rules. I have rolled out the secret ingredient is love. I was seriously, and this is 100% swear to Jesus. I was seriously considering calling Pump Ferrari and inviting him down here with us today. Because if you've watched our promotional videos, he's in them because he hangs out with us. He's our friend, and we'd like to advertise his status as a human being. But the question, pump juice, secret ingredient, is it love? Is it hate? Is it mass murder? I don't know. I didn't produce it. You would have to ask him. I'll give you his phone number a little bit later, though. Not right now. Next question. Is that for gold? Shh. Next question. Okay. Next question. Do I have to whisper it? You have to whisper it. Okay. Professionalism. <laughs> okay. Whose face? No, I'm not doing that. Uh, whose face is, <laughs> is on a uh, billion dollar bill? I'm sure you have several hundred thousand of them, and I'm not likely to see one myself. I am curious. It's actually uh, Dash Bennett. But that's because it was, it was a misprint. Dash Bennett, I hate. I hate you, Dash Bennett. It was supposed to be. It was supposed to be Liza Minnelli, but they mixed up her picture with Dash Bennett's. And for some reason, trillions of billion dollar bills with his picture on them are out there right now. Next question. Next question. Would you Next find question. the WWE Championship a difficult belt to shine because of all the grooves in it? I'm only asking this because I consider you the foremost authority on championship belt shining. You did have a few years of experience there. The current one? Yes. Think about this. You rub it, but it goes with you. How are you supposed to polish it if it's moving with your rotation? Is that all we have? Good question. Is that the best question you could come up with? We have we have some for Jimmy. Where's the next one? Next okay. question. Uh, he has uh, Mad Mike asked for the grand facilitator. Oh God, grand facilitator <laughs> of fucking fornicators, the Ministry of Muscles, the IBC champion of the Galaxy, Juicy James DeMarco, the seventeenth. Seventeenth. That wasn't the question. No Roman numerals. That wasn't the question. Sorry. I don't know my Roman numerals. No. Uh, what is the most appropriate pose to get? What the hell? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> There's some Tiger Wood. <laughs> what All is the most one. appropriate pose to get individuals who hate you to suck your muscles? Oh, man. Oh. It looks different for everyone. It varies. Just like opinions. I mean, if I had to, like, really say, I'd say... When someone's in the bathroom taking a shit, you gotta kick the stall door open and run in with your fly down. <laughs> <laughs> Make that... sure they seem really like vulnerable. It's when they're most vulnerable. Is that makes sense? Is that is that a preview of what we're gonna say at the uh, in Clearfield at the mu- muscle worshiping ceremony? Pull up the real flyer. Don't pull up that. <laughs> Don't pull up that. Pull up <laughs> yeah, I know. No. Our fucking. Pull up the flyer. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I just. I just. Wow. Pull up the flyer. I was trying to play it straight, and I swear, and I just. You got me all fired up, Sorg. You know, Sorg. Uh, okay. You know how to. Like, you know how to really on? turn me not, on, man. I have not seen the time. Pull up the flyer. They, they have not put the real flyer. They have not put the real flyer on the website. Whoa. No. What? no what? We, Stop it. Like, see, Sorg doesn't Stop know what we're talking what about. What are you talking about? I'm gonna punch you, you in go, the face. Oh man, like, there's an actual flyer that was created. 
that still isn't on the website. You know, I think still, I've seen that It's somewhere. hard Hold enough. Go it's to, hard enough to, to get Twitter. the right price on the flyers. How are we supposed to get our muscle worshiping oh, ceremony? It's on, it's on the Facebook, isn't it? It's on everything. Yeah, it's, it's on everything but the official website. Go to my Facebook. Look through through my profile picture. If you're not out the there, right, out there now, right now, I have a fistful of 50s. Well, not literally, if you know how to run a website. <laughs> <laughs> Kapow. <laughs> Ooh. Uh. <laughs> Uber. Give but me a mark as a striped shooter. You gotta you gotta go and you gotta kick someone's ass and then it's up to you. You can decide what muscle they suck. It's up to you. It's all up to you. It's, you wanna do drugs, do them. You wanna drink, do them. Don't though, because what? <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. No, he's making good sense. You let him go. Oh, okay, okay. I think I found this here. Now, this is apparently... There it is! There's, yeah! Well, one, I think that's a naked chick in the middle. That's not a know. naked chick. Don't worry about it. Don't worry If you really want to know what muscle worship is about, go to YouTube and type in muscle worshiping. Or, better yet, go to wikipedia.com and type in muscle worshiping or muscle worship. Do you have to have safe, safe search on? No, actually, <laughs> you don't, because it's P- there are PG thirteen. Oh, there is a Wikipedia page. So uh, yeah, you, so yeah, out. give us a rough outline. All right, all right. According to this, according to the Wikipedia, <laughs> I'm right, right here. Uh, and you can let me know if this is this is right. Uh, muscle worship is a social behavior, usually with a sexual aspect, a form of body worship, in which a participant, the worshiper, uh, touches the muscles of another participant. Uh, the dominator, in sexual arousing ways. Which can be include rubbing, massaging, kissing, licking, quote lift and carry, and various wrestling holds. <laughs> Hammer locks, bear hug, dude. The, the bear hug. That's another thing. You need if anybody who's listening to this. Once you're done listening to Sorg Spit Game and turn you on, you need to go to YouTube and type in bear hug tribute, and then after I'm watching that. Muscle worship. <laughs> and then you'll go to bed and you'll be nice. You'll never sleep better in your life. It's gonna rain tonight. If you're in the western Pennsylvania area, you'll sleep tight. Now don't get us don't get us wrong. That definition might not explain what's gonna happen in clear. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is Wikipedia, <laughs> but but their sources are cited. If you had to if we had to describe <laughs> it, it would be Pornographic He Man. So, so, on okay, steroids. Can, so, so, whatever is going to happen in Clearfield, can that be uh, added to the Wikipedia as a footnote in what muscle worshiping practices? It's going to have its own Wikipedia page. They're okay. going to they're going to tear down muscle worshiping Wikipedia. And they're going to put up Chess Flexor, Jimmy DeMarco, muscle worshiping ceremony. We, I, I feel place. bad because like I feel like I feel like uh, this is what parents must feel like when they got really good shit for their kids on Christmas. <laughs> they don't know what they're going to get like. We have so much that we can tell you right now. The kids are like, I want a pony. Yeah. I want a, a Bratz doll. I oh. want a, I want a, whatever. All those rednecks in Clearfield oh, are like, I don't support my kids. I want, <laughs> I want to see Flexor shirtless. <laughs> and I want to yeah. t- see his pecs rub against DeMarco's pecs and suck on their dacks. They don't know what they're in for. <laughs> they don't. They don't. They really don't. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what did I tell you? professionalism oh man i told you save that for the third i'm coming i mean to the third march 3rd chest <laughs> oh. oh no why is this hairy <laughs> why is this battery hairy? oh no it's so not only hairy it's explaining to do it's like if a, if, if a girl gives birth that's what the urethra looks like when sword pushes out the d-battery from his peel <laughs> <laughs> I literally yeah. just found that. Did you, the theme, <laughs> did you ever hear the theme the RoboCop? Oh, yeah, you yeah. just found it. I imagine, like, a shot of Sorg's flaccid penis, like, all seven and a half inches flaccid, and then all of a sudden, it just starts to... You see, like, a, a body in it, like, on an anaconda. Piranaconda. <laughs> and then and it just starts going, like, uh, out the pee hole, D-battery. And then all of a sudden, it's like... It starts raining D-batteries from the pee hole, and his ball sack starts to jiggle and fucking bleed. <laughs> Do you know Chuck Roberts texted me, and he he said to me, he didn't ask me, he said to me that if we do anything for the muscle worshiping ceremony that is inappropriate or can get us or him arrested or that the company shut down, that there event are, There are going to be children at the show. He said that both of us will either be fined or fired. 
I think we're fine and we're on fire. That's what I think. I, I was going to say, I don't know if Chuck Roberts can do much if he's in prison. Yeah, I know. Oh, he could do something if he's in prison, and I'm sure he'll like it. All right, this video uh, came up from Riz in the chat room. <laughs> I oh guess, my God. Uh, this is a preview of what we can expect would, uh, uh, as a possibility <laughs> this Saturday. Um, uh, there you go. Oh, it's like the Scott Snyder Triple H pose off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. 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 Oh Whoa. Wow. Take, I'm taking wow. this. Uh, back to the back to the questions, maybe. Uh, we have some more from Mad Mike. Uh, Yo, so, Mad so, Mike. So uh, tired. he asked uh, Jimmy, would you tired. ever would you ever give Mr. Flexor a championship match? Yeah, of course. We're gonna go down to Texas uh, to Ray Rose promotion, and uh, this guy here. Can you point to him? Can you get him on screen? No, yeah, I know. I'm gonna. Like, I'm talking straight to you. What? Look, uh, nah, you. Right here. No, this guy, the one that that will be that can see that. He's speaking you? now. He's speaking now. Wrestling. I'm in Texas, sword. Yeah, we're coming to Texas, and you're gonna sit ringside. Whoa! Here. We're gonna handcuff him and Ray Rowe <laughs> like in 69 position, and then they're gonna Whoa. watch me and Flexor fight for the IWC World Championship in Texas. And it, I don't know if I like this. It will count as an international match because Texas is basically Mexico now. <laughs> so now we will like we'll put on a, a real sexual ecstasy escapade. They'll leave everyone those people that night, they'll pay for a full ticket. They'll pay for a full seat, but they'll only need the edited. I was gonna say the headhunters are gonna be at that show, so what? Headgivers? Headhunters. Headhunter A and B? <laughs> yes. We're C and D. B and D. It's right there on the couch. Are there still are there still transsexuals at that show, Russell Fan, or is he? Going no, to- not anymore. The transsexual, no. the transsexual has a TNA tryout. Okay. He's oh man, I thought you were there. Did you ever go to Walmart by uh, Robinson? There's a transsexual that works there. You know what I'm talking about? Been there There's a transsexual no. cashier that works there. She looks like Frankenstein, like or Frankenstein's monster. Excuse now here's me. the real question: Is that transsexual in better shape and better looking than all the IWC fans combined? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Sorg, what do you think about the IBC fans? Me and Sorg. Wait a minute, should I email? Sorg him always Sorg shits on the IBC him? fans. I mean, he's always what? hates on them. What? No. He's he, like, me, Sorg. Always, I'm, they used to yell at me whenever I'd stand in front of them, whenever I'd yeah, film yeah. the matches. And now they tell me my DVDs suck and they want Tony F back. Where's Marcus? Where's Marcus? No, no <laughs> one's saying they want Tony F back, man. They want to watch DVDs. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorg pulls his fucking butt cheeks out and he leaves his shirt, cover them. So then, first time someone says they can't see, he lifts the back of his shirt up to his ass <laughs> saying, no, Can you see me now? And then this mm. falls out of the crack. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps going though. It's like Chucky without batteries going, in him. Chucky's going, more deadly when the batteries going. aren't in him, just like Sword. Because he wants them back in them. All right, back to the questions here. Uh, <laughs> what are the perks of being IWC champion of the galaxy? I assume it involves at least two jetpacks and a mint condition collection of LJN WWF action figures. Oh, there's no glamour. Chuck Roberts doesn't take care of me. He's a loser. He sucks. Like, if, if Norm was still in charge, I'd be getting five extra dollars. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, maybe at least ten extra dollars. But you wouldn't be getting as many segments because Norm would be out there for at least five. Months. Yeah, Norm would be out there talking for more. Than, well, I don't know. That's a close thing because Chuck Roberts puts out ten minute long YouTube videos, and then Norm used to like sing karaoke before the show. In between every match, he'd come out and give his thoughts on you know what happened, what took place, and then he'd wear those ugly ass shirts that look like a Hawaiian dude threw up in a Polynesian girl's oh. pussy. <laughs> excuse my friends i'm sorry mrs sword <laughs> but yeah to answer your questions it sucks being an iwc champion i hate it i want to lose but i'm just better than like most of the idiots chuck books like chuck- well, what about what about on a 10 you're you're wrestling logan shulo he's in oh, space he's, logan, logan shulo, shulo. In space. He looks like one of those little kids who dresses up like Satan for Halloween in the red leotards <laughs> with that fucking uh, that thing. Yeah, look here. I got the fly. Yeah, there you go. Sword brought it up. Put horns on there and fucking put that son of a bitch red and tell me that's not Satan. Like, come on, man. It's 
Jimmy DeMarco versus Satan. It is. Oh, oh, oh man. That's, <laughs> that's that's for another time, Sorg. I'm sorry. Yeah. I remember I remember that story. That was uh Yeah. I remember that video. It was a video? Oh, there's plenty of videos. I wish you know, I wish there was that video somebody made Jimmy DeMarco over like this it was this awful Jimmy DeMarco versus Satan video. No, oh, I remember it was like it wasn't even like actual video, it was like a slideshow. Yeah. <laughs> Someone needs to like make a real video. Um not JTM. Because he's very busy. It'll take three years. Yeah. I gave him tailgate takeover footage and I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I don't think you're allowed to talk about tailgate. Tailgate Takeover, someday that footage is going to be seen and people are going to be what like, What is Tailgate shit. Takeover? None of your business. We did so Tailgate Takeover for the Steelers home opener, filmed it, we oh, were yeah. raped by player, player parking, Ecstasy showed up unannounced, even Chris Lurie showed up unannounced. We had, and Justin this is, Plummer was this is the truth, Justin Plummer showed up, we had people left and right, they're like, I know Bubba Snyder, he raped me. He gave me rats and crabs. That's true. And then, yeah, months later, rat and crab infestation, Mullins North Shore. We called it. We have the footage to prove it. Someday soon it will see the light of day. Maybe somebody oh, got nice. the JTM in the footage. JTM has? Oh, yeah. Maybe, man. Maybe Bubba probably offered him, like, free fucking rat lunch <laughs> for the rest of his life. <laughs> so he threw in footage. Battered wow. rat tails. Battered rat butt. <laughs> R-rated rat tails. Wow. Uh, more questions. Uh, this is an interesting <laughs> one to Jimmy. Uh, and, you know, I think we can throw this to chess, too. Um, would you have made a better bodyguard for Whitney Houston than Kevin, Kevin Costner? That's tough, dude. What do you think? <laughs> That's a good question. I like that one. Would you have guarded her body? Would you have been a better you... g- bodyguard for Whitney Houston than Kevin Costner? I don't know. Kevin Costner's... He's no slouch. Yeah. He's going to be Superman's Earthbound father soon. What? <laughs> He's in the new Superman movie. Is Superman's Earth Day? Really? Yeah, and Russell Crowe's is alien, uh, genetic. What the father. fuck? Hello? <laughs> I'm telling you, I saw it on ET Entertainment Tonight the other night, or whatever the fuck that show is. <laughs> wow. Uh, Jimmy's like, I don't know what that show is. And what would be your dream <laughs> entry number into a Royal Rumble? Whatever is last in it, man. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> come on. You call yourself a professional wrestling fan and you're going to ask that? That is, come on. Want to be number one? Get wore out? Let everybody spit on me? Walk, work me over? Unless it's everybody got in the ring at once. Then it doesn't matter. That, that'd be a battle royal. Oh, shit. My job. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Flexor and was beat a fan up at a battle royal once. Well, it was Tell a royal battle. I was in uh actually <laughs> this Friday, yeah. not to not to change how, how not to change companies, yeah. but this Friday, Gauntlet for the Gold, AIW. Yes. You, you know, actually we do have a question about AIW for Jim. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? What did you do now? Uh, now people are gonna make fake Twitters ask me if I'm taking sloppy seconds and shit. Thanks, Flux. We're fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just <jealous. laughs> Uh, yeah, Brian K. asks, uh, who's also known as Samoa Joe fan, apparently. Uh, when he, he still has fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when is DeMarco going back to AIW? I could see him fitting into Flexor Industries perfectly. This Friday, man. Anybody can come back at the Battle Royale. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't supposed to tell them. Never. You know Never many- coming back. <laughs> text? Never going back there. Ever. Why you think Flexor Industries and me and fit out? Because why? Because we're a team in IWC, you fucking genius. Why don't you start your own company? Take a loan out from the bank for a thousand bucks. We'll get to run a, a show. Tax returns. Or maybe you'll run a couple and, shows. And I gotta see. I, I gotta depending see. on who you book. <laughs> and, and I gotta say, uh, I, I saw a tweet earlier that you guys have a favorite question. Oh, the black girl question was the best the one time. Yes, do you guys <laughs> find black girls attractive? I mean, how the fuck? Oh, wait, wait, wow. so, so when, when did somebody ask you this? That was the one time before the career versus career match with me and Chesney when me and Flexo were on. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, I remember that. I th- yeah. I'm pretty sure it was that time. Wasn't it with you? I don't know. It doesn't matter because if they have a slanted eye between their thighs, then what's not to like about them, right? Yeah, black women are beautiful. I wouldn't I wouldn't be the guy to be like, yeah, so it goes for you. You remind me of a black woman. Very hot. <laughs> Very hot. <laughs> 
He's got that affirmative action going. Affirmative action. <laughs> but you don't have the childbearing hips that most of the guys and I, IWC fans have. Those fat asses. <laughs> That's why Core Time always yells at Chuck Roberts because his fat ass IWC fans break all the chairs. <laughs> that's that's something the dirt they don't want they don't want like out there chuck they're like get rid of these seats throw them in the dumpster without anybody looking because the fans are so fat they broke yeah. them. core time dude who runs it he's like chuck roberts what are you doing with these fat ass people man <laughs> i gotta get rid of all my wooden seats and get these titanium dips come on man i need to retarnish these they're so dirty these fans they need to take baths yeah 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 there are some dirty ass dudes coming to iwc i hate when i Not get just like dudes the women too Oh, dude, there are no girls that I... Well, yeah, the well, girls that do come not... Sorg, you, you don't have to comment, but I know you nod in your head like, yeah. the girl. There are no girls at IWC shows, and the ones that do come are dirty, disgusting, they smell. This is the truth, and, like, a lot of the guys that come there, I think they'd make out with me if I went behind core time with them. <laughs> they do more than make out with you. I'm not trying to go there. I'm trying to be professional. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, man, they stink. I hate when I have to go through the crowd sometimes because I'll smell them. They smell like old Pizza Hut mixed with fucking, like, the shit that grows behind Dirty Kids' ears. Not even Pizza Hut. They can't afford Pizza Hut. They get DiGiorno or something. <laughs> DiGiorno's pretty good, bro. I'm not, say, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's well, bad. No, no, yeah, it is bad for us. Me and Flex don't eat no DiGiorno. We, we get those, those Tony's like, pizzas that are, like, yeah. three bucks. We stack them, like, six high and eat that shit up and then do steroids. <laughs> <laughs> I eat stacks of Tony's pizzas and then shoot steroids in my ass. If I get text messages from a certain someone, ask them why. Listen, I can't have Vince or Johnny call me asking me if I'm on steroids. I'm sorry. They should already know. Vince's. They better know. No one, no one does more fucking steroids than me. <laughs> Don't believe that. If someone calls me up and offers me a job and says, are you on anything? I'll be like, fucking right. Johnny. <laughs> don't even don't test me. I don't know where you me. get them from. Don't test me. I'm not me. saying it's Tony F., but whoever you're getting your steroids from, they better know. Keep the supply coming. Keep it coming. That's Keep why it you're on I do so many that it's, like, changed. I'm, like, the first steroid van. I'm the, I'm the Dracula of steroids. I'm the first. Anyone I bite now will be, like forced to hit the streets at night looking for Annabelle and like what do you think these marks are from down here yeah what do you think those are from i got one here actually it's, it's zit because i have greasy skin Back <laughs> but i tan the, the benefit is i tan easy the uh the downfall is my pillowcases get greasy fairly quick mine usually <laughs> gets slobbery my pillowcases my underwear does too <laughs> uh, so, ever. Wow, I do have a couple more questions from the fans. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if they're good ones. Oh, they're good ones. Uh, I'm not asking that one. Ask uh, it. What is it? Yeah, ask it. What is it? No. It's okay. What's it involved? Uh, Flexor, why do you have ugly hair? <laughs> oh, man, they ain't ugly. Look at that shit. Look at that. That's from Patrick O. Patrick O. Patrick O. Is he really the Brian? <laughs> if you want a full name, I'll forward it to you. Um, forward it to me. I don't want his name. A follow up: Is there any type of girl Demarco won't sleep with? Uh, a transsexual at Walmart. Yes. What say. <laughs> what, which one? Transsexual at Walmart. Oh yeah, there you go. That one. No way. No deal. That's your steroid supplier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. I want to go up to her and ask her if she gets her shit because that Adam's apple's banging. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and have DeMarco and Flexor ever made out with each other? Listen, it's not the third yet. You better wait for. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> We're here to talk about two things. Muscle. Professionalism and, and muscle worshiping. Yeah. Those don't go hand in hand. March that's 3rd. That's what we're here to talk about. We're going to make our muscles are going to make out with each other. What? You're going to see flexing and fucking. Yeah. F and F. <laughs> F and F Industries. Excellent. Flexing. Flexing. Flexor. Fucking. <laughs> flexing. Flexor. Fucking. 
Flex 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 Fuck that! That'll probably crash and break his back. Chucky Bird. He needs the delicious chopper. No, the flex jet it doesn't go. It goes. Uh, 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 uh. Flexor <laughs> as the blades spin around in the air. Flexor just bought the boat from the uh, old Thunder in Paradise show, and he's converting it. <laughs> it's gonna be at the regatta this year in Pittsburgh. <laughs> now, if you may buy now button, click. It's mine, not yours. Not yours, mine. Are there any more questions? Yes, uh, is any, <laughs> does anybody from the panel have any questions for our esteemed guests Please. here? Uh, I want to point out to Lubricate you guys. Lubricate us with them. <laughs> uh, well, I, I mean, we briefly mentioned in one of the questions. I, I'd love to know more about what's going on with uh, Flexor Industries over at AIW. I hear there's some good stuff going on over there. Yeah, yeah, we, have, we haven't seen much of it over here on the show. Uh, uh, what's going up on, uh, in Cleveland with you? In Cleveland? Well, you must know. Check the website. <laughs> no, but seriously, <laughs> this Friday, Gauntlet for the Gold. I don't know what they have going on. Cole Cabana's coming to film his Wrestling Road Diaries number two or something like that. He didn't ask my permission. And <laughs> as everybody knows, I run that place up there. I hear Domino's going to be there. Cliff, Cliff, whatever his name is. Cliff something. I didn't even know they still made fucking Cliff pizza. 1856, whatever he's called. It doesn't matter. Chess Flexor is going to be there. All the Flexor industry, most of them, they're going to be there representing. We're going to be full effect. Gauntlet for the gold is ours. And I don't want to have a rematch with the fans. Because if you look back years and years ago, tell them what happened. You were in the ring. You were in AIW. <laughs> you saw what I did to the fans. Me. Tell them. Tell them what I did. Flex or tell them what I did to the fan. I was in the ring just laying there after getting my butt kicked because my butt got kicked and it was sore. And I was covering up and I looked over and I seen Flexor coming in the ring and I was like, all right, let me get some relief. And I seen this fucking thug like uh, stop and, and go like this and gave him a little, gave him a little Whoa. like that. And Flexor responded with a. Moon sent him flying, and this shit went uh, seven like, rows back. He went. He did go pretty far back. There used to be video of it online. I don't know if it's still out there, but if you're a fan, don't mess with Flexor. Don't don't lay a hand on him, or else you'll pay the ultimate price. Once you once you touch once you touch Flexor, you sign your own death warrant. No one can save you. Not even Chandler Biggins. He'll throw you to the wolves. Who knows what happens, man? I saw Chandler Biggins truck a fan one time. A little white girl. I did. <laughs> I did the one time. Absolution I think two it was. She had, she was kind of hot. She was wearing a little green dress. She drunk out of her mind. She jumped the rail and fucking Chandler like, gored her through the guardrail. <laughs> Why isn't there footage of that? How did you just see that? I don't maybe there is footage you could buy the DVD. What's the DVD uh location? DVD You go to <laughs> the DVD hotspot. AIWrestling.com. Click on their website. See Chandler Biggins gore a fucking oh, woman. Look at this. Look, there's my picture. There's, there's. So this is Gauntlet for the Gold that's going on here. Uh, what, what is Gauntlet for the Gold? For those that that hot ass. It's their, it's their off. battle royal of the year where the winner gets an absolute title shot. Mm -hmm. You know who won Gauntlet for the Gold before? Somebody I know. Sterling James Keenan, who's currently in in WWE. <sighs> Michael Facade was a four way winner. Who else won it? Who else? Somebody else won. Who else? Um, this is number seven ish, I think. <laughs> no. I know Sterling did. There's been a lot of combatants. But this year, it's Flexor Industries year. I think Drew Carey showed up the one year. <laughs> Anyone could show up. Was that Drew Carey or was that Fat Man? Fuck me. No, man. Drew Carey ain't that fat. That was fat, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of people in it this year, it looks like. Uh, uh, you, of course, Flexor, uh, Facade. Am I uh, in it or am I just in that picture? I don't know. You're in a picture. Does that mean you're in it? Because they put me in a lot of pictures, and I don't know. Damn, uh, my tongue is numb from that cough drop. Dude. We'll Tom, see if my name gets called. We got Tom Dunn's Cole Cabana. Uh, looks like Tom Dunn is in there? <laughs> no. I, I think so. It means Tim, Tim Dunn. Oh, Sorry. man. I was going to say. The uh, fuck? Colin Delaney here. 
So uh, so that looks like fun. That's that's Friday, March second, up at uh, Cleveland in Cleveland, Ohio, AOWrestling dot com for more information on that, or their Facebook page, Twitter, whatever. Back to what we were talking about. Okay. Young gentlemen, Catholic churches, rape. <laughs> oh, no. I ain't <laughs> that. No, listen. I was talking to the bishop the one time. He called me on my cell phone. He usually does. He usually FaceTimes me, but I wasn't by my iPad, too. He called me, and he's like, listen, Flexor, I have to ask you. <laughs> as, you know, as a fellow member of the community. <laughs> Uh, what do you think? My feeling what do you think I should do with all these all these priests? You know, they like to get a little bit of something something on the side. I told them a little bit of advice. Get them laid. I can't tell these people the advice because they might be the next pope or whatever I said. <laughs> so my advice for these people listening: Pennsylvania, Ohio, Kentucky. Look it up. Sixteen is the legal age of consent. Remember that. It's not 18 like a lot of people like to think. 16 is the legal age of consent. So go find yourself a youngin. Not too young. Just a little bit. If they can drive to you, it's fine. That's a good way to look at it. Hey, Sorg, what do you... I'm not what, wasting the gas what, money on these prices. What condiment... What kind of condiment do you put on <laughs> a mentally challenged hot dog? I don't know, Jimmy. What kind? Mustard. No. <laughs> Wow. Um, <laughs> while that was happening, there was something uh, submitted here by Mad Mike in the chat room. Apparently 10 hours ago, uh, Norm Connors released a statement on Facebook. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see this yet. No. So, uh, <laughs> I saw, no, I saw it. No. I was going to tell you about it, but I, wanted to, I didn't know if we were going to bring it up. I didn't know if we wanted to talk about it. I saw it. He basically said that he's going to confront us because what you said is a bunch of bullcucky. And he says, chew on that Jag Bags. Jag Bags? Come on. Even though That's not even right. though, if you watch our latest video that we put out, he apologized for bringing Norm into this. I said sorry. Even though it was true that he hung out with Norm that day and had dinner and Norm shit all over the fans. Even though it was did, true. Man. Look at that. He put it on the screen for us, too. Look. So I can... So I see I'm now advertised for the March 10th Core Time event. I wanted to keep it quiet to catch the more going flex or off guard. <laughs> What is he going to do? Since it's out there, let me say this. Jimmy, you disrespected me. You disrespected Chuck. who was busted his ass to run IWC. And most importantly, you disrespected the fans who have supported you all these years and are a huge part of why you are who you are today. There will be no muscle worshiping bullshit. Oh, man. This is a family show. No comedy. It will be you, Flexor, and me in the ring. Naked. What? I promise you this. I have two years of pent up. Rage to get rid of, and I can think of no better time and place than March 10th to take it out, take out the IWC's trash. Chew on that Jack Max. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You couldn't think of a better time and place than that, man. You have more important business. You have Logan Chulo to contend with that night. I had something I was gonna say, but I I'm so mad. I mean, let's take it seriously for a minute. You apologized to him, even though it was true that. You were having lunch or whatever, whatever the fuck. I'll had. tell you what, Sorg, I would appreciate it if you could put like this part, like somewhere where comment, IWC fans will see it, Facebook. or somewhere. Yeah, comment I am it. offering. I wish I had it on me. I don't have it on me. I actually, I'm gonna offer a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, and it might have sound a lot, but indie wrestling, that's a lot, and I'll even <laughs> throw in trans too. Hundred dollars plus trans, whoever kicked the, the shit out of Norm Connors. The on site, whether it's it was anybody, anybody who wants it, a hundred dollars. Hey, he put a bounty on my head once, but it was like make believe fairy tale stuff, just like Chuck Roberts' sex drive. If you are at the show March tenth, I got a hundred dollars, real American, with Ben Franklin, fresh as hell. I'll even write in uh, blue permanent ink, IWCWrestling.com on the bottom, so we can circulate it. Get get the word spreading, but if you kick Norm Connor's ass, I'll give it to you. That's even if he shows up though. Yeah, Norm probably ain't gonna show up. He was supposed to be at tenth anniversary show. He didn't show up to that either. And say he did a promo wearing a dorky ass shirt that was buttoned all the way up to the top, playing pool. 
in some friggin' bar. Hey, guys, I wish I could be there, but I'm pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and he ran. He ran away from IWC two years ago. He's a coward. He's a little... Run- he, he did. I swear to God, strike me dead if I'm lying. And I'm not going to get struck dead. I know four different prayers. He told me, sword, I swear to God, he told me the night he left, that some of the reason he left, not all the reason, seriously, some of the reason was IWC fans because they're so spoiled. Like, here's a prime example. You look at AIW in Cleveland. They book some of the best talent like out there on the indie scene today. And their fans eat it up. They're loyal as hell. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They talk mm-hmm. about it on Twitter, talk about it on Facebook. They, they get into their shows. Our fans are so ungrateful. Norm was booking some of the best talent in the world. And they are just like, eh, you know... It's IWC. We know that's what they do. Let me see if I do. have the money. Let me see if I have the money. I don't know. Mm. And then they come and they sit there like this. like, Because mm. if someone sees them going like this, oh, that's looked down upon because then they're they're not as smart of a fan. Because real smart fans will just sit there like this. But then if it's a guy that like they love from like, that they've read about or something, then they'll just, ah, oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah. No, but then you chance. got, you got their chance. A guy like Michael Facade can go to a city like Cleveland or go somewhere else and they go nuts for him because they know it is. But when it's here in Pittsburgh, oh no, they got to sit there like, oh, but they'll, ch- they'll, they'll go crazy for the hentai doing the same old shit that he's been doing for 10 fucking years. You might have to beep that if you put that anywhere, but they'll go crazy for that garbage, but they won't go crazy for a guy like, facade going going you know what i mean break literally breaking his back in some cases and the same thing with logan he sucks i don't i don't well he doesn't suck obviously but like he doesn't get his credit he's getting his credit now because now chuck's mad at me so now chuck's gonna put me in a match hoping he kicks my ass he's gonna get a name made for himself by you beating his ass yeah that's what's gonna happen yeah 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 yeah. and i'm sure like when dennis gregory comes back or i'll be in the ring after i win a match and chuck's gonna come out talk for 10 minutes and then i'll hear war machine war machine will play for about a minute and a half until dickhead gene simmons starts to, to sing and then dennis will trot his ass out to the ring with that shit eating grin oh, i'm back i'm back until i get deployed again in another six months so if i can beat him like it well since chuck runs only like every other month if i could beat dennis at least two times i'm good until he gets deployed again or if I really want to get out of it, I'll dress myself up like I'm like of Middle Eastern descent, and maybe he'll just want to make out with me and like pee on me and burn my holy book because he's a disrespectful, <laughs> disrespectful American soldier. I'm not disrespectful. I respect all religions, races, creeds, and sexual orientations. Oh, <laughs> you got me all hot, all mad, Sorg. I'm really, I really am mad about that Norm thing too. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I got all. I, so, hey, Chuck. I got your title. I'm not showing up on the tenth. Oh, <laughs> I'm not showing up on Logan the tenth. Logan Shula wins my count off. Yeah, there. I, I would rip this right now if I didn't want to hang it in my room and be a big fan of myself. But I might. I am not showing up on the tenth. I might show up on the third. Next question. All right. Uh, I'm, well, I'm out of questions. I'm going to sprain my ankle I'm leaving Sorg's to... house. <laughs> I'm going to pee on his back porch again. I'm going to go. I'm going to go home and write something real. Controversial on Facebook. Oh, Jag, Ooh. Jag, pillowcase. What? Whatever he wrote, Jag, <laughs> Jag muffin, Jag, 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 Jag I was gonna say Jag muffin. Like he probably thought about that. Like while he was like, he probably thought about that for at least two weeks. <laughs> Wrestle hey. fan, can I get a yeehaw? Yeehaw! On that right. note, guys. <laughs> uh, right. Wow. So you guys may or may not be showing up <laughs> this Saturday, March 3rd, over in Clearfield at Combat, Combat in Clearfield 3. <laughs> <laughs> That's the noise Norm's going to be making if I show up on March 10th. <laughs> I'm going to be there for sure March 3rd. Oh, March 3rd is muscle worshiping ceremony. Yeah, I'll be there yeah, no matter what. That. We're going to have truckloads and truckloads of what is it called? baby oil. Yeah, there's going to be baby oil. We're going to have uh, Hot Wheels come out on a pedestal, and then we're going to like se- sexually, sensually spread his cheeks and put different IWC fans' heads' asses into it. He's going to be pl- playing our wow. theme song on a kazoo. Yeah. With little <laughs> banners at the end, so whenever he blows through We're going to make him like defecate and take all his sexual frustrations out on them. 
But I might not be at March 10th now unless Chuck sweetens the deal. I'm going to hold Chuck up for $1,000. The at least that's unrealistic. <laughs> uh, Chuck, I'll hold you up for a, thirty bucks, hundred and thirty dollars, because my bounty on Norm's a hundred. Sorg, take it, take me up on the offer, man, hundred bucks. I know you hate Chuck. Wait, what? Stick a gun inside your camera. Just walk up. To <laughs> I got one. You can use if you want. Hold on. Hey, if I if you if there's a gun on screen, will you get kicked off of your um servers or whatever? What? What are you doing? <laughs> I got something for Norm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Hey, yeah, yeah. And of course, court time, March 10th, Road to Super Indy 11. Uh, all the information over there at iwcwrestling.com if you want to find out what's going on there. Uh, Clearfield, I got to know, Clearfield will be two cameras. What? I know. Now, Sorgatron Media took over. Now, I have, a, qu- I have a serious question. Are you going to be able to edit the muscle worshiping ceremony so it can be put onto the DVDs? Or is that going to have to be a separate DVD rated? NC seventeen or something. It, whatever needs done, uh, but if I have to edit something like that, I we, need to hire somebody else. If I can give you um, a sneak, if I can give you just a sneak, like a little tidbit, there will be smoke. There will be saxophones, like really seductive saxophones. <laughs> there will be a cross between one mythical tr- creature and one creature that you find in Africa. It's good. My teasing too much. Yes. Okay, that's how, it. That's how all are you going to do all this with the atmosphere of that building on the fairgrounds of Clearfield? PA? I'm really Show not up. kidding either. All that will seriously, legitimately be there. Fog, a mix between a mythical creature and a creature you find in Africa. Saxophones. And sultry saxophones. Seriously. Wow. Lance More than that. That's maybe that, that doesn't even top. We it might off. even get Chris Maverick to, to like strut around the ring in his demolition outfit. I want him in his uh. Customized baseball jersey. His customized Cleveland Indians belly shirt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, D- Juicy Jimmy DeMarco at DeMarco for Life on Twitter. Chess Flexor at Chess Flexor on Twitter. Go check him out. Check him out at IWC. Check out Chess here at Friday at AIW in Cleveland, PA. Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, PA. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. Go see Chess Flexor beat people up. Flexor and do what he does best. I might not get booked to wrestle, but I will punch your face in if you're a fan. <laughs> Look, <laughs> listen to the sounds of my broken hand while Chess Flexor talks about beating people up. Oh, God. I don't care if it's in Cleveland or Pennsylvania. I'll beat any fan any day. Oh, not because not because I don't like the fans, but just because you deserve it. You deserve it being stupid, idiotic, fat, and disgusting. And now with that, we will leave Sorg with a French kiss. I thought you said you were going to shit your pants. That's for next time. Because he said no, he said no poop and I agreed. I am a man of my word. French kiss. French kiss. French kiss. French kiss. French kiss. French kiss. Sorg? Oh, God. Which camera, Sorg? What's going on? You didn't say French kiss me. You didn't say French kiss me. What are you doing? You're on it. What are you doing? Oh, my God. Get up. Yeah. Get up! His hair smells nice no, as hell. No, lick it. No, it doesn't. I want to leave you with this. <laughs> Stick that battery in him. Let's get out of here. Flip Why is it? We're leaving. Why is it wet? It was in his I'll mouth. Wow. Uh, th- thanks, guys, for joining us here in studio. Always an interesting interview. Uh, so with that, we're going to go see what's going on at Mayhem Gold, and we'll be no. right back after this. A farting is cat. <laughs> I swear to God, it, he just does nothing but step on me and fart. <laughs> Stop stepping I on me, Ken! And fart. I was her wrestle school, fan. Like this, she. she you're so, you're so shy about it. Just ask around. Yeah. Wrestle fan. That picture. Wrestle fan. You and her. Wrestle fan. Can I buy you dinner? Can I do you see a movie? Wrestle fan. Am I correct in okay. looking this you're way? Welcome, yes, Missy. you're you're right. You're right. Okay. Is right. Missy doing it too? Okay, you can you can stop looking right now. Right. Missy, are you doing it? Missy is no, not. She, she's not Let's in the shot. Missy.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, thanks, uh, Jimmy and Chess, for that interesting uh, interview. They're nuts. Uh huh. And um, mm-hmm. wow. Uh, so now, uh, without further ado, I want to go to our usual segment at this time. Remember when? Now, this week, uh, you know, like I said, we have an interview coming up after this uh, with the Death from Above uh, of the movie featuring uh, Kurt Angle, James Storm, Matt Morgan, Sid Vicious, uh, amongst a few others. And we're going to have some interviews here uh, throughout the coming weeks uh, with some of the actors, producers, and such from the film. Um, but, uh, I, you know, this threw me back because I this was really I really thought this film that you guys are going to see this summer is something, uh, um, you know, it, it without being attached to anything. It really seemed like TNA's company film because there's so many guys featured in it. Uh, you'll be really surprised. There's a few I don't want to spoil uh, that you don't see in the trailer, I don't think. But if you look in the right places, you'll find out who they are. Um, but it, it harkened me back to a day when another company did solely try to finance a film and put all their wrestlers in it and uh, and, and make a big deal out of it. And that movie was Ready, ready to Rumble. Um, uh, now, I, I don't know about you guys here. Raise, raise your hands. I'll work great for audio. You know, who went to the theater to see Ready to Rumble? Anybody? Anybody? Wait, I'm the only guy that was so. stupid enough to go to the theater to see Ready to Rumble? Yes. Okay. But I, but you know what? It was so, it was such an, a, a mixed experience. Because at one point you're like, hey, all these wrestlers are in a movie. But in the other, in the other side of it, uh, uh, the wrestle, the wrestle fan, the wrestle hey. fan, oh, well, the wrestle fan was being represented as, as two, uh, two uh, sewage uh, cleaning guys. I was going to yeah. say the Russell fans being represented. When, is, when was Primo in this movie? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, no. David Arquette, pretty in- interchangeable. Uh, I don't even. Remember, <laughs> I don't even remember who his partner was in that thing. Uh, uh, and, and uh, they couldn't even stick one of the other wrestlers in a in a main spot in this film. They had to uh, get uh, uh, Oliver Platt uh, to, to play the wrestler, the king. Uh, in that flick. You remember this. I see you smiling over there. Oh, I'm smiling. Wait, 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 did you see it in the theater? I'm smiling at something different. Okay. Oh, no, did you see it in the theater? What are we talking about? Ready to rumble? <laughs> no. David Arquette? No. No? Okay, again, I saw it me. with you. It's, you saw it with me. After the fact. Okay. I think, I must have went alone. Huh. Oh, that's that shameful. explains a lot. <laughs> that's shameful. But anyways, <laughs> but I just remember like, oh, great, there's this movie. And, and it was just when WCW was starting to turn that ugly corner when you're starting to scratch your head a lot. And this was one of the big things, because this is supposed to be their monumental in the cinema moment. Uh, and there was that. And there was the giant three level. Cage. I was just going to say that three level cage debuted in it, just like Super Mario three debuted in the wizard. The three-tier <laughs> cage debuted and ready to rumble to be used later. Yeah, I, I gotta it. say, a, a, a great list of uh, actors combined with a great list of wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, Diamond Dallas Page, Sting. Um, who else? Goldberg. Was in it? Goldberg was in it. Um, like you know, a lot of the guys at WCW popped up for this thing. Well, Funny not enough, enough, not only that, I mean, you figured they had a great remake on uh, "We're Not Gonna Take It." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the soundtrack was good. I remember, I remember there was a copy of the soundtrack always, always uh, uh, floating, floating, floating around with my group of friends that we were listening to every once in a while. Um, but yeah, it was just. Uh, I know the movie's been on Netflix streaming. If you get a chance, if you haven't checked it out, you know, just like all those old classics like Suburban Commando and 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 uh, No Holds Barred, you got to take a look at it just to kind of see the place where. You know, especially when we talk about, you know, there's a news story we got in here this week from LB about how WWE is, is reconsidering their film uh, division and, and the, the push they've made for this. We just saw a preview for Edge in his new film. Uh, that Which looks was, pretty fucking good. It actually looks good. Yeah, it looks like yeah. the best out of this batch so far. I'd say that the best thing since what was the one with Big Show? Was it was it Knucklehead or Knucklehead. something? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know your your parents have that. That they love that. My one. parents loved it. Exactly. Of course, I, I we, thought it was this, a funny my movie. Parents, I you're also it. talking. My my aunt bought my grandmother the Stone Cold movie where they're killing each other on the island. The condemned. Yes. The yes. Condemned. 
because it was stone cold and they thought that my grandmother would like the movie. They also apply it on Blu-ray, which she had no Blu-ray. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, I, but, but I we, thought 12 rounds was good. 12 rounds I enjoy, but we, well, what's the latest batch of straight to DVD? It's just kind of, eh. But still, well, the Randy Orton one wasn't bad either. Well, the Randy Orton one wasn't really a movie <laughs> that showcased that the movie. Movie. What it was that, you know? It, it was yeah, that was like five minutes minute. of Randy Orton and the rest was... Exactly. A movie. Exactly. And, 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 and then they got that new Edge one coming out. The, the, Edge one, the Edge one looks good, though. But, you know, but I, I recommend, and I'm, I'm looking back at Ready to Rumble, and so, I remember one. So on that note, guys, uh, let's hop to, like I said, LB and I had a uh, thank you to Sarah Media for uh, uh, giving, hooking us up with this. And everybody... Geekstar. Uh, Geekstar.com. Geekstar.com. Yes, go check it out. She's always writing about like uh, uh, all kinds of media and music. And uh, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, uh, a lot of chances for free passes I, I see on there from time to time. Uh, mm-hmm. So go check her stuff out. Um but uh, yeah, we got to check this out. This is really, it wasn't even the, the, the uh, premiere. This was just the first showing for cast and crew. Um, they're, they're working on distribution. It's going to be out, planning to come out this summer. And uh, we got a chance to talk to a, a few of the guys, uh, it, it, part of it. Uh, LB, do you want to you wanna set up this one with the producers here? Sure, sure. Um, except I don't remember their names. That's all uh, right. They it's were great the guys. <laughs> uh, we did we did have a number of interviews uh, at this screener. A lot of a lot of people were really gracious and took the time to talk to us. Um, and uh, this we'll be rolling those out uh, in the weeks to come. But this first one here is with the the two producers um, of the movie. And again, I don't remember their names, but they were great guys. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, check it out. guys dj lunchbox the wrestling mayhem show and i am uh at the death from above screener still and i am here with the producers of the film uh john and brian and uh how you doing guys good good how you doing that's right i'm good yeah. doing well doing well uh now my uh, my first question is about the production of the film was it uh did you was it an enjoyable process <laughs> <laughs> it was a long process okay put it that way yeah no i would call it enjoyable i mean we we have fun doing these, and um, this is uh, this is a third feature that we've done with uh, the wrestling crowd, and um, so yeah, I mean, we we enjoy what we're doing. Who will be first to gain access into the sacred lost pit? There were a number of wrestlers in this film, and uh, how how is it working with the wrestlers as compared to uh, just regular actors? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. No, they're just, uh, they're entertainers in a different sense, and uh, they're professionals, and uh, it's a good uh, good group of guys to work with. I mean, they're dedicated, they'll, they'll get punched in the face. If we ran out of blood one time, James Storm cut us off in the head to make real blood, and that's a true story. Excellent. Yeah, they're dedicated, I mean, without a, without a doubt. And um, uh, I handle more of the contractual stuff, and all of my uh, work with them was, was, uh, was good. So yeah, we had uh, John. John's on set more than than I am, and um, you know I didn't hear any war stories. No, no, okay. none that I can uh, tell you on TV. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so uh, what's up next? Will you guys be doing uh, another film? We have uh, we have three different pictures that are in uh, what would you, what you would call development or uh, pre-production. And uh, one's a comedy, one's a uh, one's a drama, and then there's another one that's we call Project X, which is uh, kind of a superhero type thing that we're working on. And and you'll probably see wrestlers in those too. <laughs> so very cool. Well, they do their own stunts. That's why we get them. You yeah. Know I mean? <laughs> if we stop men to do stunts for them, we'll do our own stunt. You know. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, guys. Uh, the movie was uh, fantastic. Uh, Death from Above, and look for it soon. Uh, thank you so much. I'm John Iwanaku, Brian Kaler, and back to you. A nice guy like this comes along and splat. Roadkill.
Howdy, Mayhemers. It's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. No notes on my wrist, by the way. I'll show you both of them. No notes. Nothing. Uh, so I just watched Raw, and I gotta say, it's weird that CM Punk and John Cena are using the same argument against their WrestleMania opponents. It's extremely odd. But the difference is the responses. Jericho is one of the best promo guys in the history of wrestling, in my opinion. Jericho can be the Attitude Era guy that spouts off catchphrases that will never, ever be the same again. All that stuff. You know, the shut the hell up, everything. Jericho can be that guy. Jericho could easily be that guy now if he wanted to be. But see, Jericho's different. Jericho wanted to reinvent himself every time he came back. When he came back the first time, he was, you know, he was here to save us. And he turned into the suit-wearing badass heel that we all love. And now he's even being called out for that. Like, Punk is using the same argument that Cena is. And, the di again, like I said, the difference is the reaction. The Rock chooses to respond, as only The Rock can, with meaningless, pointless catchphrases. Like, gay jokes and saying Cena doesn't have balls. Like, in the Attitude Era, it worked because everyone did those kind of promos. Every single person did, Every, except for The Undertaker, and that's only because The Undertaker said they had no souls instead of no balls. Um, but Cena came out and he, you know, cut a 2012 promo. Rock came out and cut a 1998 promo. And I think the promo was written by the writers of Family Guy, aka Manatees, where all he does, he has a dartboard with all of his catchphrases, and then... He just looks around the room and sees what nouns he can pull out, like Kung Pao Chicken. And, uh, which by the way, it sounded like he was saying Kung Pao Chicken. That's a little too much. But, and then he replaces that with an obligatory curse word to get a cheap pop. And Kung Pao Bitch was born, and the promo worked. I'm excited for both matches at Mania. Rock's promos aren't impressive anymore, and even after Cena walked out, Rock looked like he was shaking a little bit, and I've, I've seen his movies, he's not that good of an actor. So uh, this is me signing off for this week, and I will be in Pittsburgh this week. If you see me on the street, if you see me at a party and you call me Mad Mike, you get to chop me, you know the rules. Alright, take care, spike your hair, woo woo woo, you know it bitches. Thanks, Mad Mike, for that minute of mayhem. Uh, you know, I, I got to agree because, you know, I was listening to um, I was listening to another podcast where they were talking about Twisted Metal and about the car combat game has not evolved to a certain point, which is really ironic because there was a WWE, WWF car, car, car combat game uh, hmm. about 10 years ago, which I picked up on Amazon not too long ago. Um, and they talked about how the genre hasn't matured with the times. And, and from what Mike's saying, I really think about that. Like, The Rock's genre of promos have not matured with the times. It right. matured in the time that it was from one point to another, along with the Attitude Area era. And, um, and, and, and it does seem like that kind of stuff, if you look, like, like we always, you know, like, like Mike says, like a few other people say, if you look back on ECW and you look back on Attitude Area, it, it really area? doesn't seem that good. In comparison to what we what we even see now, um, I, I think there's a level of maturity that's come from the wrestling fans. Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? And, and just mm -hmm. like that, and and I mean, you're going to have your general wrestling fan that is still that's what they want. Like again, WWE is shopping to the lowest common denominator uh, wrestling fan that loves the fart jokes from Natalia. Oh yeah, there that that's getting that's getting over with somebody out there. Some some mm. you know some people are on that level, and that that's fine. That they, they're they're buying T-shirts. That's what they're gonna do. 
and and I think with that, I mean, yeah, they went to that level of people with the Rock's promo, which kind of makes him a hypocrite in a way from the fact that he's insulting John Cena that his fans are five years old. Yeah, I'm sorry, and I'm I'm not going to laugh at someone calling someone a kung pao bitch. Yeah, or or a, or a yabba dabba bitch. Yeah, okay? really. Yeah, the, the, the kung pao bitch really seemed out of place and out of line. I mean, really, is that what you're trying to do to get heat with it's this like, guy? It's like I get it if you were calling him a chicken, but he even used the chicken part. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just not. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it was just like really off putting. And then Cena came out and made him look ridiculous, <laughs> even more so. Mm-hmm. At, at the at the end of that promo, the Rock was just. He was repeating himself. Just he, he was. Like, John, he was John. John, hold up a minute. John, John, hold up a mm-hmm. minute. Yeah, he was flustered. He didn't know what to do. He was. It was like a deer in headlights, or a Brahma bull in headlights. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. it's just showing that he's not ready to be back in the ring doing promos. He's is. He's too busy doing the movies. Oh. Yeah, it, it, it's showing that he hasn't been around doing promos for the last eight years. That's true. And I will say, I think while the promo was not the level of what Rock has done in the past, I think the whole ending of last night was what WWE wanted out of that. Because okay. I'll be quite frankly honest, I, I'm one, I'm interested in the match now. Uh, Two, I'm going to be actively rooting for John Cena. Uh, now, this is coming from the chat room. Uh, Sonic says, do you think that The Rock was sandbagging to help Cena out? And how, no. How no. You don't think no. so? No. I don't think. Um, it's called bad ring rust. I'm sorry. Rick, the Rock or, took 15 minutes to say nothing. Yeah. 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 Nothing. The one thing John that Cena- promo did. Oh, sorry, Russ. Man. No, you can go ahead, Bobby. The one thing that promo did for me last night was appre- made me appreciate CM Punk and Jericho's promo that much more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, agree. I, I am that, looking forward to that match more than any it. match on the card. Oh, what was he saying, LB? That, that their promo had substance to it. Yeah, it exactly. had like real shit. And you're, like you're saying, The Rock did the same thing he's been doing his whole career. It's not like The Rock has lost it when he's cutting promos. That's The Rock's promos. He cut that same promo his whole career. Come out yeah. and say some goofy shit and run down the guy. And John Cena came out and said, "You look. You sound like an idiot. You know your shit doesn't hold up." <laughs> yeah. And then, but, all, but, and then on the flip right. side, you have Jericho and Punk, and that substance. It's not insulting to our intelligence. It's good yeah. shit. No, they the went whole, back the whole... and forth with each other, and it was perfect. Mm-hmm. It was gold for both of them. Yeah. But then just, you have Rock and Cena, and Cena's, you know, was probably in the back going, should I go out there and save this? Well, I don't, I, I don't know with that. And, I mean, I, I, I just feel like the whole thing is they're rendering – John Cena's making points. He's saying, you haven't been here for a year. You've been off in Hollywood. I have been here representing the WWE, representing my fan base, you know, going out in the world, doing all this great stuff while you've been being a movie star. And The Rock's reply is, yeah, well, you're gay. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. you know I also... And, t- and, I- no, and, 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 oh, you're gay, and I can trend shit on Twitter. Yeah. Big, I'm sorry, big fucking whoop. Alicia Fox trends on Twitter every week. <laughs> and she just shit. for showing up. She literally just showed up. And that, so was it. that was it. On. But, you know, I, I think this is a, a similar Chris. argument back what we saw a, a little bit ago when we saw CM Punk and Kevin Nash go and add it on the mic. I mean, wasn't it painfully obvious that they were from two different eras yeah. that were not compatible with each other? Yep. Oh, yeah. The Rock was the best from that era. So he's a little more compatible with The Rock and can work with The Rock. But it's not. It's just not the same. And, and we're starting to see the wear on that as we've had now five promos from The Rock and realize that they're not changing too much in the past year. Um, did, any, did, anyone, did anyone see the post-show or the post-Raw stuff like after the cameras went off? No. no. Like the, Rock, the Rock was on the mic a little bit more, um, like just going off on stuff. And he pointed to this fan that was in like the floor seats wearing a John Cena t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And he was giving him a hard time, and he was like, hey, what's your name? And then he's like, how old are you? He's like, I'm 21. He's like, everyone, look, it's the, the biggest 21-year-old virgin I've ever seen. And then going off that the last time he's seen vagina is coming out of his mother. Like, it's just, it's old. 
Mm-hmm. It is old and it's tired, and I think that's honestly that's hey. all the rock can rely on. Hey, hey, rock, hey, rock, I got something for you. Be a star, huh? Be a <laughs> be star. Be a star. Don't be a bully, huh? I Rise realize above. what it is, right? Rise above it really that. is. It, and for some reason, I don't know why, it's making me root for John Cena. <laughs> like, it really, I'm like, he, he just go out and say, yeah, you're a phony and you're a douchebag. I'm like, yeah, he's a fucking dick. He is. He's called, oh, oh, because I, you know, uh, endorse somebody that, you know, does good stuff for the community and works his ass off, you know, 24-7 a year. Oh, I'm a homosexual. Like, like that's uh, he. Re- hey, I think- hey, welcome to 2012. That's not supposed to be a bad thing anymore, Rock. <laughs> oh, mean- can we discuss Cena's missing balls? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> Fine, and, and that's the other thing. It doesn't take. <laughs> it does not take talent to go to the, to go in front of a WWE crowd and go, "Hey, everyone, on the count of three, we're going to chant this." That does not take talent. I don't care who you are. I wonder I wonder if The Rock has like a bet with somebody backstage where he's like, okay, I'm going to make this trend worldwide, this trend worldwide, and this trend worldwide. Give it's me five hundred thousand dollars if I could do that. It's not hard. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I should say it's not hard if you're a WWE superstar. Listen, listen. I, you know, no, 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 no bash against Jimmy DeMarco or anything, but he, he got everybody chanting at every show that he was at sex – Sex, sex. <laughs> I mean, not that I was trending worldwide fans because will it's an IWC, anything. but still, you know, fans I mean, people anything. love to chant ridiculous stuff. Remember, we started mm-hmm. chanting "bum" for uh, for Dennis Gregory Dennis when, Gregory. All, yep. when yeah, all of us went to the shows <laughs> and started like like Chad the Shadow would come with like a, a bottle with change in it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, we. Yeah. Oh, that was classic. You, you, you want to talk know. about the fans trying to get over or not? No, everybody's out there trying to have fun. And, yeah. and 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 yes, The Rock is appealing to that. But now it's kind of like he's just making up new shit. And well, the lady parts was kind of funny the first time. You know? Yeah, it was funny the first time. My thing was like, my thing is just like it's the mind of the wrestling fan. If you want to say the lowest common denominator, sure. But like, they will chant anything. And the, and I, I'll, I'm going to steal this joke from somebody who I'm, I, yes I'm plugging them. They write a great report about Raw every week. Um, Br- uh, Mr. Brandon Stroud on Twitter does a great job. His line was, Josh Matthews could just, in the middle of Raw, walk out on the stage and start chanting abortion, and at least some of the fans would chant it. Uh, and then it would trend on Twitter. Okay, Wrestle fan, or, uh, Mad Mike, um, it brings up in the chat room, all caps, we got all of Madison Square Garden to chant Edge for Chad the Shat. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> People I, just want to chant, guys. I remember in a related kind of chanting story, I... When, when I was a kid, we chanted, we want bread, so we could get a Bret Hart chant, and everybody just started chanting, we want Bret, we want Bret. <laughs> we, we were like, oh, we said bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to bring us bread. <laughs> I, 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 remember the first, I remember the first Raw show we went to, we got them to chant Mike Kyoto. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, because there was like 10 of us in a row, so we had a little bit of power behind us. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, it is before they stopped saying the guy's names on, on TV, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got to say, it. after this match at WrestleMania, I really do hope you don't turn Cena heel. I think yeah, that would be yeah. the biggest mistake WWE could ever make. Shut down and AON. That, and you want to talk about the like, <laughs> except for AON. If you want to talk about like eras and stuff like that. I watch like the stuff with John Cena, how he's actively in the community, and yes, he's doing like the Daytona 500s and stuff like that. But he's also, I mean, going out and doing charity work. There's a video I saw a video, um, the local Portland News. Uh, he met with a kid backstage um, who uh, who was uh, shaken as a kid, like shaken as a baby, uh, to the point where he almost died, and like he, he he's having trouble like mobility wise, um, and he just you know meets the kid backstage and has a gr- you know a good conversation with him and it's the greatest and that's the best moment of that kid's life mm-hmm. well, you know don't see and, it away from racetracks though you see what yeah. happens <laughs> <laughs> that's true but and answer me this because I'm, I'm obviously not a you know a wrestling fan from that era when would like when did you ever see Hogan or Stone Cold or The Rock doing that kind of stuff 
Hogan was good for it. Hogan was real Hogan, good for it. Hogan, yeah, yeah. But Hogan, 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 Hogan was one of the big guys in in uh, in uh, uh, Make a Wish. Like I remember yeah. an old WWF oh. magazine, like we were talking about last week. Last week, uh, where it was him, you know, with a bunch of kids, they do a two page spread on it. I mean, and he was going and meeting with the troops. He was doing all that kinds of stuff, like you see John Cena now. I don't okay. know if he was doing as much, but I know, I know, in that era, he was the one. He was the the guy for doing that and make a wish made a big deal of it i think he was the one that did the most stuff with make a wish for that time yeah. and, and now i think john Cena is doing not more. Be, hogan may not be a good example but like look at stone cold and the rock mm-hmm. they were out in the media uh out in the public doing stuff usually it was to promote a movie to you know uh be on snl or some you know show or something like that yeah. they weren't mm-hmm. doing that same stuff I'd probably say Mick Foley in that area era. Mick Foley, yeah. I mean, it happened. I don't think it was highlighted as much. I I don't know. I I can't because uh, well, you gotta think the Attitude Era. It wasn't exactly something that went right along with kids and charity. Yeah. Even though they sold stuffed bears of all these guys like Shawn right. Michaels and all of them, it didn't necessarily resound with kids at the time. Yeah. So um, I, I agree. I think there might have been a little pulling back on the reins. I I can't think that they never. They, 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 there was any time that they, they didn't do charity. Yeah, I don't think... I mean, not never. I'm just saying, like, what you mentioned, sort of, like, it's two different eras. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's two different mindsets. Yeah. I don't think turning John Cena heel would be benefit at all to the company. No, no. Well, I, I, Whatever I, you want to say, that's their Hulk Hogan. Well, I think everybody keeps thinking... Everybody keeps thinking that John Cena uh, turning a heel is going to be, like, the, the, the uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan era of things. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have mm-hmm. to be. It it, it, it it could be something smart enough that the kid's still going to appeal to him, but everybody else knows that he's a jackass, you know? Uh, uh, I mean, Jeff were, Hardy? I, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I mean, God. His mugshot's on a t-shirt. <laughs> there you go. Um, Actually, Rick, Rick the Model Martel was big in the Make-A-Wish, too. There you go. There you go. It doesn't. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, especially in this era, especially in this era where everybody gets it. I mean, Chris Jericho is being an asshole on TV, but I'm sure he goes meets with the kids as it is. You know, I mean, or, or he punches people out in the parking lot. This is I mean, different. Thank you. I was just about to say that one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Punches women, no less. He's yeah. a woman puncher. Yes. Sean um, Michael's wife. So, uh, I got to ask, uh, because, I, of course, we did spend some time watching that last night in the Hangout. Uh, did John Cena make it to the NASCAR start? No. Like, no it, it, it couldn't have, like, as late no, as it got left. delayed. Now, he was supposed to do it on Sunday when it was originally supposed to start. There was rain, <coughs> I believe. Yeah. Uh, and it just got too close, and he was there for Raw last night. So huh. that's... Rain would be really nice last night at, La- at NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> they did have a little bit of rain, actually, uh, during yeah. that. A little bit of sprinkling. They, they were they were on the air seven hours on Sunday, eight hours on uh, Monday. That's ridiculous. Wow. They had to come yeah. up with stuff because they were delaying the race so much. Wow. I, I get I, hats off to them. But but you got to think about it. They did something last night. Well, with us anyways, was they got us to start watching them while Rock was talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we were we were switching on. I, I had a I, you know I was watching Raw on my laptop and I had I turned the TV on the Fox because it's over the air, sure. And now I'm kind of interested in NASCAR. You know, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be you went to the sh- you went to that thing and you're like, holy shit, I'm down with this. Yeah, it it's I, I hate to say this, but it is just kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> and the same the same thing with uh, with Sarah, um, she. Uh, we, me and her actually went home to uh, Green County to see my parents because they wanted us to come over and watch the race with them and hang out and all this stuff. And just by talking about it, they got Sarah to pick a driver and get interested in NASCAR. And she was telling me Monday, she's like, I don't know why, but I want to watch this NASCAR race. I'd rather watch it with your parents, <laughs> but I'm kind of curious now. And I'd like to point out that uh, the driver she picked was Matt Kenseth, who fucking wow. won the, the oh, race? Shit. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Your girlfriend's like a wizard. <laughs> she is a wizard. She is a wizard. And she'll never hear it because she doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. if you think about it, 
wrestling and NASCAR go hand in hand. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, that's that's why when I came back from the from that race, I could draw all the parallels and stuff like that. Every every sport needs that moment where it um like. It, some some a lot of sports have more than one, but where they just grab and grip uh, the uh, the attention of uh, drop my mouse um, <laughs> of uh, of the general public and like for uh, for UFC it was the uh, Stephen Bonner Forrest Griffin fight at the end of that first Ultimate Fighter that really got a hold of people. For wrestling, it was WrestleMania. Yeah. You know, WrestleMania that yeah. was the big the first one when that really grabbed people. And for NASCAR, I mean, it's it's been around for a long time and it's I mean it's got a huge following, but people who don't watch NASCAR are now fucking watching. Juan Pablo Montoya fucking blow his car up, you know. What I mean? <laughs> and and you think about it, NASCAR has does have its heels and its faces. Yeah. You got Dale Jr. who is loved by everybody, and that then you got stated. Jeff Gordon. The Jeff heel. Gordon is not a fucking heel. No, he's not right? a heel. He's a face. <laughs> he was Kyle uh, Busch is a heel. <laughs> Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon is a face in the same way that John Cena is a face. You know, he's a face, and everybody hates him for it. <laughs> see and see I brought that out of you LB <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah and I wonder I wonder if this this fire that happened last night just in prime time just made everybody like how many I want to see what happened to the ratings for NASCAR last night why are we talking about NASCAR on this show fuck <laughs> I, <laughs> we're doing it again jeez you, you did Ra say last night watch us start talking about I know, racing kind of turned and there right? is welcome to the racing mayhem show <laughs> race and mayhem show exactly but, well, you know, you know, LB you, you can start this new podcast with your mother where you can talk about NASCAR for uh, 45 minutes and we'll, whoa we'll whoa whoa Remember, don't, what, don't what, get what? me wrong it's a little bit interesting but I am not a NASCAR fan <laughs> <laughs> the whole show would be her convincing you how great it is and converting <laughs> you over to 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 the left turn side um, yeah, anyways, the far, the far left. turn hey, to the dark side. So, so <laughs> LB, you had a couple, you had a story in here about what's going on with the film division with WWE. And we, we made a passing, uh, uh, comment about it earlier. Can you let us know what's going on with that? Yeah, basically, um, what they're saying is that, you know, they, they want, they're, they're going to wrap it up. I mean, they're, if, uh, if thing they, they did their financials, their fourth quarter financials, and obviously the films aren't doing too good. And what they said was, um, you know, we're going to try a couple more things, but if it doesn't turn around, we're going to get out of the film business. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're taking too many losses, and, and that's the thing with this last strategy, the, this this straight to DVD stuff. I I don't know much about the movie industry, but I don't understand what they expected out of it. You know, that's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 your, your stuff's going straight to DVD. You're doing movies. You've got to see the quality of these movies. What are you guys thinking internally about the quality of these movies and how they're turning out? Because mm -hmm. they feel they don't, you know, much like the TNA problem, they don't feel like a big movie. 12 Rounds right. felt like a big movie. Even mm -hmm. See No Evil felt like a big movie. And it was on the level. It was on. <laughs> it was it was up there. You know, right. uh, it, 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 you know, there's a certain point. These movies don't feel like they're as good of movies as Suburban Commando. With yeah. I, I'm really at that point thing. with these. I think like their perspective of why they're not going to go into the movies anymore is just from the simple fact that, yes, they are straight to DVD and all, but if the revenue from that is not at least close to matching the, the amount that they put into the production of those movies, then obviously there's got to be a time where you got to bail out. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. it's it's you know basic just weighing the two options together. You don't want to spend all your money just to get you know that little bit of revenue that's not even gonna come close to matching you know the amount of money you put into it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to say this. That would totally be awesome if WWE did a final film, a version of Cannonball Run. I agree with CM Punk, Mad Mike, and some kind of that would Western. Be awesome. There's a Western that was on the table of them using like like all the wrestlers and in it and, and I everything. remember that. And, and I don't. And they, where did it go at this point? You know, um, I think they're doing the right thing by putting Edge in this film. Uh, that last scene, this last movie with Cena looked like it was like the right tone of movie. 
you know, yeah. not not the Marine Two, not the behind enemy right lines columbia thing well that's the thing like the marine and this is like the weird like this is an argument you can make the marine two was ted dibiase yeah yeah do you think think they can use those younger stars in those movies or is the movie's positions only going to be for the john cena's and the randy orton's Uh, what what do you expect at that point you know i mean well first you did you did the marine two where you just replaced the guy you did a you did a, a speed two with this guy um you know, it really feels second string at that point. And I I, I I don't get it. I really don't get it, you know. God, I'm picturing Santino and Cannonball Run. It's just... Yeah, oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we, oh, can we talk Santino about Santino for a second? Sports car? Santino. Yeah, LB. <laughs> LB, you're, put, you're bringing up some good conversations about uh, Santino on, on the Facebook. I've, I've, got an, I've got an idea about Santino. Yes. So we all agree at Elimination Chamber that we believed... We genuinely believed in our souls that Santino could have won that match and and got won the WWE championship, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, they yeah. had us. They had us. I think that they can take that and roll it up to WrestleMania and put him in money in the bank and he can he can uh harness that same magic again and win the money in the bank match. Because at that point he has he, – somebody uh, Somebody has to fucking lose. They have yeah. to cash in and lose. Yeah, yeah. And it can be Santino because Santino is still in that, oh, look, he's really great, but oh, he loses. But we still love him. It doesn't damage him at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there were some di- – we, we posted this on Facebook and I wanted to show there were some disagreements with you, LB, though. Uh, That's some, true. Somebody's, somebody's doing something with their mic there. Um, That's me. I'm sorry. Well, like one one wrestle fan, of course, agrees with you. Riz says wrong, great Kali. Uh, Alexander K in there says Goldust. He needs something to do since he's apparently not getting a match with Cody. Um, Zach Mike's Matt Mike says Zach Ryder who turns heel when he cashes in on Cena. Mm. Like a the Ryder. Yes, like yes. Idea. And also uh, uh, Paul Paul Hammond says Money in Bank winner Duke Drozzi. Uh, but other than that, no, I, I think I think see you're that, right. I, this is the most intriguing time for Santino right now. Like, where did this come from? Literally, you know, um, mm-hmm. or was it in the planning since we saw him on the Royal Rumble poster? Yeah, you know, I, I think I, I think the great thing about Santino is that there's a point in a lot of wrestlers' careers where they need to reinvent themselves. Yeah, there was a period. There was a long period when Santino Santino stuff was getting really stale. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know it wasn't the stuff that it used to be. So here he I comes. Think, he's going to say funny stuff and get beat. Yeah, but yeah, and now he has sort of transformed it into something new, something interesting, something that we can get involved with. Mm-hmm. And I think that's I think that's the one thing that a lot of wrestlers need to remember is you have to always reinvent yourself. I think that's definitely what Santino is doing. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Santino is the new hacksaw Jim Duggan, according to Mad Mike in the chat. So <laughs> the Italian half saw Jim Duggan. Yeah, he says, <laughs> oh, and Mike, Mike even says, this has been building since the huge reaction from him at the Royal Rumble last year. That's right. That's right. Because it was something different. Because, I mean, how many times have we watched the Rumble and we're like, yes, 30 guys, anybody can win. But really, I mean, only maybe these five guys can win in the, in, in the yeah. long run. And really, this yeah. is kind of – it's really five guys in this match. The yeah. rest are kind of window dressing and maybe a couple of funny things will happen. Uh, but that even, was the even, first even, time even, where you're like, shit, Santino could take this. Maybe he yeah. won. And, 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 you know, and then he doesn't. But but still, yeah. Even, but yeah, I, I agree with you on the rumble thing. Like even last, even the rumble from a couple months ago, out of the four men that were the final four, Sheamus, Jericho, um, Orton, and Big Show, did and did anyone think Sheamus was going to be in the final two? Yes. yes. Uh, out of those, yeah. Yeah. Out of those, yeah. Out of those four it. guys, though. What? Out of Jericho, Orton, and Big Show. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I mean, don't don't forget he ha- he has been WWE champion. Yeah, yeah, he's already in there, and he, he's long overdue for being popped up in that spot again. Yeah. And yeah. plus, I mean, he's kind of been the, come the face of everything. Like you see, Miz kind of rose up too. Um, they were kind of it was kind of obvious they were building him up to something. It, it, you sorry, know, I can see sorry, What did I say when I sat down at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings? <laughs> What'd you say, LB? 
But then I say, oh, it's probably some along the lines of, we forgot about Sheamus. I wouldn't yeah. rule him out as possibly winning the Royal Rumble. Yeah, I remember you yeah. said, mm. Yep, yep. There you go. There that you go. Exactly. happened. Actually, that's kind of funny because you think about it, you got Santino getting a push kind of, Sheamus getting the push, and Miz is starting to fall. Yeah. 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 Or is he? You know, maybe they'll, they'll have a spot for him. Maybe he'll have a spot in this whole GM versus GM thing. Oh, which again, he was one of the last two in the Elimination Chamber. He was. He was. If, I mean, if the, if listen, he's kind of getting his spot here. Listen, if the Miz takes David Otunga's rightful spot in a WrestleMania match, I swear to God, <laughs> there is no man that deserves that spot. Let's talk about more David, than Otunga. David Otunga. As David Do you understand Otunga. me? And David Atunga has become the best meme in professional wrestling right now by, Atunga, by, by, by the symbol genius of taking a picture of himself. With, there's, a, there's a guy who reinvented a gimmick. Ah, uh, you know what's mm-hmm. no longer available? Uh-huh. And, and just killed his meme. The David Atunga proudly presents page is taken down uh-huh. from Facebook. Uh-huh. What is this crap? Fuck or did bullshit. I mislink it? And, rest- tell me and I wrestlers it. against misogyny was up for like how many? Fucking- oh wait, it's back. I just mislinked it. I'm, my bad. My bad. Yeah, David oh, Atunga God. presents. Hold sword, don't scare me like that. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is tremendous. Why? David Why not? <laughs> Why I not? Swear to God, David Atonga, have... Batista, and an ice cream cone. On, on Raw, they had the Punk Jericho promo, and it was good. And then Daniel Bryan, AJ, and David Atonga come out at one time, and they go, This is my match! Everyone <laughs> I love is in here! It is. It mm. is. Uh, I mean, yeah, David Atonga probably presents no, no Money in the Bank, uh, uh, anal, anal, Analation Chamber. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, I don't know. Weed and 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 RVD. I, I, I you know, I, I don't care. It's amazing. I, I don't even know what's going on in this picture. So there's a stogie, um, but uh, there's a barbershop quartet. He has a hat on. He has a hat on. There you go. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, David Tunga is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to professional David wrestling. David Tunga. <laughs> well, I mean, wasn't any of the guy that you're like, where is this guy ever going to fit in? Yeah. He's so yeah. Generic. exactly. He has too many muscles to know what to do to do with, and his trunks look weird. Now look at yeah. him. Yeah. Now he's now a look at him. He's not going to go become a commentator like uh, Matt Stryker that we forgot about in NXT. Oh, um, Matt Stryker. Could you say? Man. Could we say now David Otunga is an A-lister? He is an A-lister. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I mean that 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 his that is was it is is his wife, girlfriend, wife? Is it? Fiance. Fuck wife. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean that they were at uh where were they? Uh crap. The Grammys was it? The with Grammys. The, with the yeah. coffee mug. Ah, oh, that was great. Balls deep that in her great. skinny ass. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, that bitch is on Weight Watchers. That bitch is lucky. And in other breaking news um, uh, from the Riz uh, this past week, he broke this Yay. on the Facebook page. After un- undergoing surgery in December of 2011, guess who's back in the WWE? Black Yay. Black Ref! <laughs> uh, I want to find out his name. I, we don't know his name. He's just been Black <laughs> Ref. Like, we just... Hey, if you to can the point get, when, when if Jericho you can get beat that shattered when Raw comes to Pittsburgh, LB, I will buy you a collector's cup. Aww. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Collector's cup. That's right. I'll put it up there. I'll put it up it's there. Got, it's gotten to the point when Jericho attacks CM Punk and and the refs start coming out and we're yelling, "Please let it be Black Ref." Did he come out? Was he? Out? I didn't see him this no, episode. No, no. no. Uh, yeah, I yeah, think he's SmackDown stuff. though, isn't he? I think, I'm pretty sure he's SmackDown. I don't know. I, see, I think I saw him on Raw a few times. Uh, they, they, sure. I mean, they took him back and forth, but I thought he was SmackDown before. Is, is Teddy, not- Teddy Long needs to be a ref. Do you know that? Yeah. 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 He also, he ref, also manager. Did, he was the manager of Doom with Ron Simmons and Butch Reed, too. Oh, oh fuck yeah. yeah. Remember when he was, uh, what was the one guy's name? Like Creddy, Craig, Craig Mack? What? Something Mac, Rod, Rodney Mac, Rodney Mac, yeah. Rodney Mac and Jazz. Rodney yeah. Mac, Jazz, and yeah. Chris Nowinski with a face mask. Mm hmm. <laughs> What? Chris Nowinski. Wow. With a face mask. Like, oh, when he had, like, the face, like, damaged thing going on? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like Cody Rhodes now? He, he, wow. was, he was the Owen Hart to the uh, Nation of Domination. Okay. Okay. Oh, right. I... That must have been, like, that, that's something that ran ran for a long time on, like, WWE Heat, right? No, it was on Raw. I remember, like, why do they, you they, remember they, they, they feuded with the Dudley Boys about something. 
<laughs> oh, okay. About something. Right, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, no, yes, David is having the greatest thing ever. I gotta mention this. You know, I gotta mention this. Trish Stratus and Lita are joining forces for a movie, uh, according yeah, to ProWrestling.net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like they're going to be uh, getting together to do a remake of a movie called Doctor Doom versus the Wrestling Women, which I yes. believe is one of those like luchador Mexican movies. Yeah, uh, you know? the old horror shit. So I, you know, I need to look this up. Doctor Doom and the Wrestling Women, huh? Uh, I, I gotta find some of the old school shit on that. Sorry, guys. I, I will say, Sorry made a good point about this. At least it's not gonna be that shitty Gail Kim movie. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think I made that point, but yes, I oh, agree with that Oh, she point. was a ninja. She was a ninja. <laughs> because she's Asian. And, and it was, yes, exactly. <laughs> That's uh, insanity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, when we say ninja, we mean the actual ninja, like Asian ninja, not ninja as in black person ninja. It's Doctor Doom versus the Aj- Aztec we- uh, mummy. Oh, oh, is this right? Is this right? It, it, you can actually get. It looks like a two disc set of Doctor Doom. Wait, wrestling women versus the Aztec mummy. Is this a sequel? I don't even. Oh, what God. is happening here? It's the Yeti. I don't. The Yeti. This is crazy. I I must purchase this. I think I just ordered it. Shit. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, wow! Wow! <laughs> I'm, I'm, We're gonna make a Google uh, Hangout and watch it one. and watch it together. There you go. There Sword. you go. Yes. Sword, could I, could I take a minute to piss off Russell Fan? Sure, go for it. Okay. Always Russell encouraged. Fan just posted the Facebook from the WWE as he flips the calendar to February twenty eighth, two thousand twelve. Cody Rhodes has officially held his illustrious title for 200 consecutive days, a milestone that allows the second-generation superstar to join an exclusive fraternity of legendary intercontinental title holders. Listen, listen, WWE. The man. No, no, no. Listen, WWE. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot say this is the greatest intercontinental title run in recent time and have him only defend the belt twice. Five years. In 200 days. Or five, five years, years, or whatever. <laughs> he defend- I okay. like it. I think Cody Rhodes is doing good stuff. That's it literally- is. It is. It oh, is. He the whole hey, he I mean, the really, really belt. technically. I mean, he's. No, he, Cody Rhodes is doing great. He's going to be defending it on, on house shows, so that counts. Cody Rhodes can have all the titles he wants. Exactly. exactly. He's lovely man. Rhodes. Can, I, can I just say that I miss yeah. um, Wade Barrett? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I miss him. And, and also, Sarah was coming around and warming up to him. Aww. She was He was going to be her guy. Mm-hmm. Blame Barrett. Aww. Well, well blame it on injured. Big Show. It's his fault. because well, he's classy and he has a rose on his lapel. And finally, before we head out of here, I want to I want to call out Bobby here. Uh-oh. Um... Uh, Bobby, okay. Bobby, you... Uh, Everyone's calling out everyone. You know, you, you've been a tremendous uh, uh, addition to the Wrestling Mayhem show for, for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, bringing us the glory and the downfall of AON, of course. Um, so nice. Making us learn about the history and the monster fighting that happens in Johnstown, PA. Uh, mm-hmm. But I gotta say, you may have made your greatest contribution contribution to the show. Because as <laughs> you know, you know, we designed the site. And, um, and, um, uh, and, 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 and Bobby says to me last night in the Hangout, uh, hey, you need a banner for your site. And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess I do. He's like, I want to make a banner for your site. Uh, less than a minute later, man, it's halfway done. This is the best stuff I've ever done. <laughs> I'm getting excited for this. Uh, so I wanted to share it with you guys. You're on the video. It's on his Twitter. Um, it, we retweeted it, I know, uh, on the Mayhem feed, I, uh, I think. Uh, we'll probably show it in Facebook or something. But I, I want to I show everybody, unveil, drum roll, please, the new WMS logo. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby, and your tremendous. Is that paint? Yes. That is your tremendous WMS Microsoft Mayhem. Paint. WMS Mayhem. Wait, the M stands for Mayhem. Mayhem. Mayhem, because there's a <laughs> ham bone. So, the show, so basically, does, the moral of this story I, is we're a show about ham, but we can only run in the month of May. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. All and true. All true. And so, and I ran out of room for the W. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like VVMS. VVMS. Uh, very, very mayhem show. <laughs> On that very night. All right, mayhem. guys. Let's learn. Uh, let's go. You. Well, you get the you get the honor since you 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 just unveiled this. Uh, Bobby, what'd you learn from wrestling and or MS Paint this week? 
I learned mm-hmm. that I am terrible at paint. Uh, <laughs> I learned. <laughs> Talk to Chachi. He's getting pretty good at it. <laughs> I learned um, that I am more excited for Jericho versus Punk than any match on the card for WrestleMania. And now we learned that Man at Manchild uh, returning heel may have bankrupted AON or <laughs> shut it down. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> um, Russell fan, what did you learn from from uh, uh, wrestling or uh, your pursuit for women this week? We're not talking about that. I told you, Sorg. Uh, on uh, I learned from wrestling this week that thanks to the ticker that comes on the bottom of uh, WWE during wrestlers' entrances. Seamus' theme song is called Written in My Face. I always thought it was called Lobster Head. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, Wheels. What did you learn from <laughs> wrestling uh, or NASCAR this week? Well, that's kind of funny you said that. I learned don't send John Cena to NASCAR. If you do, Raw loses viewers to turn it to NASCAR to watch the fires. Okay. LB, what'd you learn from wrestling or something else funny this week? Uh, <laughs> um, I learned from I wrestling, I learned that um, uh, surprisingly, uh, I wouldn't have guessed this like a month ago, John Cena can say more in two minutes than The Rock can say in 20. Um, <laughs> and uh, what I learned from uh, from NASCAR is that, man, those uh, those Cuban guys sure are spicy. <laughs> that, uh, fiery Latino personality. Fiery Latino Cuban <laughs> Colombian personality. It takes one to know one. And they they, they asked Shakira. No, wow. Never mind. Uh, from the chat room, <laughs> Mad Mike learned that The Rock is cutting promos from a TARDIS. That's why they seem so dated. And his wrist is actually psychic paper. There you go. Uh, Sonic says he learned that WWE uh, wasted a lot of effort burning down Ryder, Eve, and Kane to push Cena when they could have just hung. Ah, it moved. It moved. Just hung on, on and let. Sorry, somebody put something in the chat room and moved. <laughs> I'm trying to read it. And let the Rock choke the promo, choke the promos, and turn Cena into a super face. And, and Riz learned that Epico and Primo are the tag team champions. Always thought it was Rosa Mendez. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was like, <laughs> tag team champions. Team? There you go. Uh, Bobby learned that I can piss <laughs> off a uh, wrestling fan by saying, Cody Rose, five years, five years, five years is Intercontinental Champion. So Bobby is here. Bobby is here. You don't have to read what he learned. It's in the okay. chat room, so I read it. <laughs> Anyways, I learned from NASCAR (laughs) this week that even if I'm just watching it and amazed by the number of cameras and technology and say vroom whenever they do the close up camera, (laughs) you guys know from the hangout last night, uh, I might be in the NASCAR. (laughs) Let's put it this way. Instead of instead of just flipping right past NASCAR, I may stop. If I join a race. Segment. We're going to have a new segment on WS May- or WMS Mayhem show where WMS we're going to be like, Mayhem. hang it up. Mayhem and NASCAR. Ham and Mayhem. NASCAR. That's what Ham the show is going to be about from now on. This Excellent. is the Paula Dean Mayhem show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Coming in so, May. We'll just change the show to WCW. <laughs> there. <laughs> sure. Sure. Why not? Why not at this point, right? Yep. Um, wow. Uh, what, what else are we doing here? Um... Oh, and from wrestling, I learned. Um, I, I'm learned that if somebody pulls a Ultimo Dragon, even at an indie show, still funny. <laughs> yep. Just putting that out right. there. Um, hey, you, you can follow what we're doing. What's going on here? Uh, we're on Twitter, of course, at Mayhem Show. Uh, you can follow everything going on. Look, there's a uh, there's Bobby's logo right there, and all kinds of other stuff. And, uh, and hey, what's up, Mickey M., uh, who, who hit us up about Body Slam earlier tonight. I don't know if that was on the show or gold. You can also check us out. We got a Facebook group that's really hopping. A lot of people are talking about a lot of things. 
Uh, so go drop by there, chat with us. Just look up the Wrestling Mayhem Show in the uh, uh, Facebook groups. It's the one with uh, at least 70 members. I know there's another one that converted. It's really weird. Uh, we're also <laughs> over there. We have a Wrestling Mayhem Show page uh, where you'll get all the uh, latest news postings. You can comment on, on stories we're looking at for the week, uh, when we're up in the Google Hangout, when we're live. Uh, people posting pictures of getting choked out by Sergeant Slar Slaughter. Hello, Errol. Errol? I think that is your name, sir. Uh, welcome to the mayhem. Um, and, uh, hey, we're also oh, on... Errol. Errol? Do we know him? Glad that is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is, um, uh, uh, yes, we do know him. Okay. Hi. Classic, classic wrestling, uh, classic wrestling manager, um, the devious doctor... Oh, that's the guy you're telling me about. Siegel, Dr. Siegel. The Dr. devious Siegel. Dr. Siegel. Devious Dr. Siegel. Getting choked yes. out by uh, Sergeant Slaughter. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're telling me about him. Excellent. Yes. So now you yes. know Friend it. Of the show. Now you Thank know you. It. Thank you, sir, for uh, for uh, tuning in. We'll be in touch. There you go. There you go. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Wrestling Mayhem Show by the app. Check us out. We're here at 8.30 p.m. Eastern every week. Um it may change a little bit in the future. We're working on some stuff with scheduling some new shows on the network, um, which I'll talk to you guys about. Um, yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, round about 8.30 on Tuesday, there will be wrestling, if not shortly after. And you can check that out live at SorgatronMedia.com. Again, we're on YouTube. We're on Blip TV. We're on your Roku box. We are on iTunes. Just look us up. Please star us. Subscribe to us so you don't miss an episode of this. Because who wants to miss this? Right? Hi. Hi, and guys. Hi. Uh, give us a call. We got the uh, phone. Excuse me. Phone line 412-206-WMS-09670. <laughs> you can uh, hit us up on email at... Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Dot com. Dot com. So that's it for uh, for all the guys. Missy's already headed off the bed. Thanks you, Jimmy, for and Chess Flexor for joining us. Thank you, producers of uh, Death from Above, for talking with us this past week. LB, good job on the interview. Uh, I got my D batteries. I am Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.